All right, with no further ado, our first runner-up for 2000. Welcome back into the pregame, everybody. We're lucky enough to be able to catch up with the head coach, Tommy Atha. And coach, last week was kind of a crazy week with the shuffling of schedules and things of that nature. And I remember last week in our conversation, you talked a bit about with the shuffling of the schedules and all those kind of things, homecoming activities, that you really felt like you're reflected in the way that we started last week. Coach, I know when you've got a game like that and you guys were up 38-0 to zero at halftime, running clock in the third and fourth quarters, one of the really good things about those types of situations is the opportunity to get your young guys into the game, get snaps. I know you use four quarterbacks in the game. A lot of guys got their name called. And th that type of experience, I know, pays dividends further down the road. Well, I think it does in several ways, Matt. I, th I think it's important – you know, from the standpoint of, of just uh, building your program and continuing to try to do those things to, to allow you to hopefully continue to be successful by those kids getting better and getting quality snaps. And I think it goes a long way towards buy-in from your own kids, you know, who go out there and practice hard every week and get an opportunity to get into a varsity game, hopefully keeps them motivated. And, Coach, of course, last week, Bowden Owens, Eli Thompson, Talon Shirey, Clevenger, Slay Clevenger, Demarion Floyd, all five of those guys scored touchdowns in the game. And one of the things you've talked about a lot this season is the ability that you guys have to distribute the ball and have a lot of different playmakers. And that was a full on display last week. I don't know if you'll remember, but that was one of the things we harped on after the spring game up at North Murray was just so many different guys got touches and, and so many different guys contributed. And we have confidence in multiple guys. And, and it's not we're going to try to figure out how to get this guy the ball. It's it's we're going to figure out, okay, where's the best place to, to try to attack somebody in the air on the ground. Aggressive and getting after it and just to step away always from blocking another one. Boy, he's had such a great senior year. He's, he's so much faster than people really. Blocking in space when he doesn't have the football and – helping us on the defensive side. So he's just been a, a real bright spot for us this season. Well, Coach, I know now you've turned your attention this week to the Chattooga Indians. And one of the things you always talk about is the importance of getting better each week and every player consistently bringing their value each and every day to practice. So what has been the, the what have been the biggest points of emphasis in terms of, you know, just the team continuing to get better and be ready for each matchup? I mean, we just continue to talk about taking the next step, you know, and that was one of the things Coach Sharp always hammered was be better the next week, you know, whether it's game two after game one or on down the line. You just want to continue to improve, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, we want to be better tonight than we were last week, and there's always areas for improvement, and we've got a number of them, and you're talking about going up against, you know, I know their record doesn't reflect it, but a super scary Chattooga football team, They've got athletes all over the field. Um, they do have some big kids up front. And, uh, you know, I mean, they have the potential to, to be explosive on offense and, and run to the football on defense. I think one of the things when you look at, uh, of course, their, their roster is there's a few seniors on the team, but you do see a lot of freshmen, sophomore, that kind of thing. And a lot of these kids I've seen play basketball over the last couple of years. And, and you're right, there's some really athletic kids on these teams. And so uh, if you're not careful, you, you got some guys can break big plays. So I'd imagine that's something you all really focused on this week. No doubt. And it's always been that way. I, I grew up playing against Chattooga. I've coached against them for years. And they've always had kids that could break the game wide open. And it's the same thing this year, you know. And so we've really worked hard on making sure we're sound, that we don't give up chunk plays on defense and that, that, you know, we don't allow run-throughs when we're on offense and uh, hopefully we eliminate them from making big plays and, and, and do what we're supposed to do. And, of course, one of the things, if you've ever been up, and I know you have multiple times to the Little Bighorn, folks in Chattooga County, they love some football, so it ought to be a great atmosphere for a road game. There's no doubt. Every time you go up there, and, and Darlington Chattooga games have always been super competitive games, and uh, we don't expect anything else anything less than that and their fans will show up I, I think it's homecoming if i'm not mistaken so there'll even be more fans there because i know that's a big deal for them up there as well like it was for us last week so we've got good weather so uh hopefully we show up and and uh do what we're supposed to do tonight 
Well, Coach, it's hard to believe it, but you're getting ready for game seven of the season to kick off tonight. After tonight, there will only be three regular season games left to go. And I, I feel like a broken record. I know we say it all the time, but every year it just seems to clip, clip by faster and faster. It's crazy. It does. Every single season goes faster and faster. And one of the things, I, I do think this, I think our kids enjoy being out there the week to week. Uh, and the day to day is uh, is a lot of fun. Our our kids are very positive right now. We There's an assortment gift basket. Regular season games. Though you have multiple times to the Little Bighorn folks in Chattooga County, they love some football. So it ought to be a great atmosphere for a road game. There's no doubt. Every time you go up there, and, and Darlington Chattooga games have always been super competitive games. And uh, we don't expect anything else, anything less than that. And their fans will show up. I, I think it's homecoming, if I'm not mistaken. So there will even be more fans there because I know that's a big deal for them up there as well, like it was for us last week. So we've got good weather. So uh, hopefully we show up and, and uh, do what we're supposed to do tonight. Well, Coach, it's hard to believe it, but you're getting ready for game seven of the season to kick off tonight. After tonight, there will only be three regular season games left to go. And I, I feel like a broken record. I know we say it all the time, but every year it just seems to clip, clip by faster and faster. It's crazy. It does. Every single season goes faster and faster. And one of the things, I, I do think this, I think our kids enjoy being out there the week to week. Uh, and the day-to-day -day is uh, is a lot of fun. Our, our kids are very positive right now. We want to make sure that we do everything we can to continue that, but it does go by very fast for sure. And one of the things that I've just kind of an observation, I know every year the chemistry of teams is different and those sorts of things, but it really appears, at least from sitting up in the booth and watching these kids play, that they're having a lot of fun and there's a lot of camaraderie and just a lot of team chemistry with this group this year. Yeah, it starts with your seniors. There's no doubt about that. Our seniors love to play football. Uh, most of these guys have played together since they were really young kids and they've been looking forward to their senior year and I think it filters down and and we've got underclassmen that have bought in as well so you know I, I do think these guys enjoy playing with each other well coach it's been a pleasure to talk to you as always looking forward to the Darlington Tigers at Chattooga playing at the Little Bighorn tonight another big region contest it's going to be a lot of fun and looking forward to the game and as always thank you for your time thank you Matt it's always a pleasure all right, that's going to put a wrap on our conversation this week with head coach Tommy Atha, and we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue to set the stage for you. It's the Darlington Tigers at Chattooga Indians coming up in just a little bit right here on WLAQ and the Darlington live stream. We'll be back. I was shocked by it. Well, I think when you look at the region from top to bottom, Darlington's at the top of the region, 5-0. and oh. Pepperell is 3-2. and two. Trine is 4-1, uh, and one, but uh, they're listed just below Pepperell. Coosa is 1-1 one one in the region and 3-3 uh, three and three overall. And our Murchie, with that explosive second half, as you said, is 1-1 one one in the region, 4-3 and three overall. Dade County... Uh, Chattooga round out the rest of the region. And when you think about Region 7, uh, single A, you think about the Darlington Tigers. They set the pace, they impose the will, they control the line of your scrimmage, and they have virtually zero unforced errors. They don't put the ball on the ground, they don't throw interceptions, they don't have late hits and unsportsmanlike conduct calls, but yet we're here. We're going to play this game tonight. They're 14 to 18-year-old young men. It's homecoming at the Little Bighorn. And uh, Chattooga is always gamers. They always want to play. No doubt about it. And to talk a little bit about the coaching matchup tonight, Tommy Atha in his 21st season at the helm of the Darlington Tigers. And this could be another milestone tonight in terms of his win-loss record. Uh, Tommy Atha, after winning last week, 174 wins and 65 losses for his career as head coach at Darlington and as head coach, period. And so if they pick up a win tonight, it'll notch number 175, which would be special to see tonight. Well, when you say Tommy Atha and you say uh, Coach Tommy Atha, 21st season as head coach at Darlington, and he has never had a losing season. Ladies and gentlemen, that's worth repeating. 
Tommy Aitha, as head coach, has never had a losing season. In fact, every season has been a winning season. In 2021, he ran off 11 wins, and it was game 13 when we uh, were finally uh, put out of the state playoffs, just two game shorts of winning it all. That's right. And, you know, I do want to mention the head coach of Chattooga also, Sean Peak. This is his third season at the helm of the Indians, 9-18 and 18 since taking over for Charles Hammond, who was the head coach for six seasons. And you've seen Chattooga in the playoffs for the last eight seasons in a row. So even though the win-loss record, um, you know, has been tough, I think some of that has to do with strength of schedule and things of that nature over the course of a couple of seasons. And they've kind of surged late in region play to find themselves in the playoffs. So um, no doubt it will have them playing hard in this game. He was a head coach at North Sand Mountain for a while, North Jackson and Pisgah, was a defensive coordinator at South Pittsburgh up in Tennessee five seasons after retiring from the Alabama education system before he took this job. Um, and, and so, like I say, he's got a tremendous amount of experience. He's going to have these guys ready to play. Well, Ian Griffin always does an excellent job with V3 Magazine. And Ian, we would need to shout out to you again. We met you tonight. And we our condolences and prayers are with your family. But one of the big things that Coach Peake said about this year's team is that he's going to need to stay patient and hopefully stay healthy. He doesn't have much experience at all that's going to be on the field. Coach Sean Peake says about 80% of the roster is going to be made up of freshmen and sophomores, so they're going to need to stay healthy, not get discouraged, and handle adversity. And the tale of two halves last week is the very adversity that I'm sure we're going to see how well they've handled that in their preparation this week for Darlington. Well, Rick, right now as we speak, the yep. captains are making their way onto the field. We'll give you Chattooga Indians. you got number four, Trey Smith. Number five, Brady Gross. Also number 54, Bobby Zinga. And number 72, Juan Roque. That is their captains for tonight. For your Darlington Tigers, we're going to start with big man number 67. Six, the Gus Bus, Gus Gamage, also number 51, another lineman out there, Gatlin Hancock. Both of those guys, preseason All State. You got number 18. That Henry Ledbetter got into the game at quarterback last week in the game against Kusa, and then rounding out the captains here for the Darlington Tigers tonight, you're going to have another senior, number three, Highland Thomas. So there are your captains for tonight. We're going to have the coin toss, and we'll get things underway from the little bighorn coming up in just a couple of moments, man. You can feel football in the air tonight. Absolutely. It's a full moon. Can we say a harvest moon? I'm not sure I don't officially. Know. I, don't I don't know. know. I'm not a farmer, but it, it looks big and it's low. <laughs> you might could have been. Who knows? <laughs> <You> know, it, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what I meant when I yeah, said that. I know it. <laughs> I, I might could have I could been, have been a, a cowboy. That would have been <laughs> okay, awesome. Right, yeah. <laughs> you could have been anything you wanted to be. I tell you, tonight we're going to be all things Darlington because <laughs> it's great to be a Tiger on a Friday night. Right, Matt? Ain't nothing like a Tiger on a Friday night. There's you said no it. question about it. Or, as in the case of last week, on a Thursday night. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know they played a playoff game a year or two ago on a Saturday night. So That's just right. fill in the blank. Whatever That's night right. Whatever the week it is. It's Absolutely. The Darlington fans have come in and, uh, you know, you know, when you talk about it on a Friday night, you know, the parents are working and traveling. They have other children at other age levels. And we just we have a good crowd. We travel well. And the Darlington family really just supports every sport at Darlington. There's no question about that. Here comes the coin toss. So we'll have the results of that for you here in just a couple of moments. And again, we're glad you're with us tonight on WLAQ and also the live video stream. It looks like Darlington has won the toss. And no surprise at all, they've deferred to the second half. That's the uh, best move you could always make because if you can end the first half in the lead and the momentum you can take into the start of the second half because you're going to have the ball first. So we're going to see the Chattooga Indians offense first in this game. And as we've pointed out, a lot of times they haven't had a tremendous amount of success in terms of wins and losses this year. But I've seen a little bit of film on this football team, and they do have some really athletic kids. Some names we'll be calling tonight. Uh, of course, Corey Gibson, their quarterback, real athletic quarterback. You've got Dan Meyer, who's a wide receiver, a sophomore. A couple of seniors to point out, Zayden Perry, Trey Smith. All of these guys are, are guys that are a step away from breaking a big play if you're not careful on defense well they're they're uh 
big players seems to be their sophomore, and that tells you that they're playing for the future with 80% of their team, as Coach Peek said, freshman and sophomore this year. He's uh, going to be able to throw the Let ball. He's athletic. Again. He can run or throw. I expect to see some uh, rollout option, pass or run from uh, their quarterback, and they've got to find a way to penetrate Darlington's defense. And for our radio listeners and listeners of WLAQ, I do want to let you know we've got a lot of great programming coming up for you this weekend. We're going to have Georgia Tech Duke. It's homecoming for Georgia Tech tomorrow, pregame at 2 o'clock on WLAQ, 4 o'clock. Toe will meet Leather. And then we'll have CBS Sports most of the rest of the weekend. And then next Tuesday, we're excited to have game one of the NLDS with your Braves. Who will they face? Well, it's going to be the Cardinals or the Phillies. We'll find out. I think either one the Braves will be prepared for because, what, 170 days, the New York Mets were in first, and then until we clinched, we were in first five days. That just tells you, you know, at the end, the Braves are going to be there. Well, you know what? I kind of hope it ends up being St. Louis because I got a bad taste in my mouth from the last time I went to an NLDS <laughs> game featuring the St. Louis Cardinals and the Braves. Yep, we were at the game where the Cardinals scored 10 runs in the first inning, and the game was over before it felt like it was beginning. Well, let's Awful. wish for the let's wish for the Cardinals. And we stayed until the bitter end of that game, hoping for a miraculous comeback that never happened. So, well, the Revenge Braves have be done sweet. it before, but that that 10 runs in the first inning, wow. You're not kidding. And it was Fultonevich who started that game, and then they brought in, I believe, Max Freed, and he didn't have any more success uh, than Fulte did that night. It was yeah. rough. But well, the the beautiful thing about tonight is the, the weather is perfect. There is no breeze. We have a full moon. We're up here in a beautiful area of Georgia. Chattooga County is gorgeous. The people are so nice and courteous. And we're sitting outside, Matt, and I'm glad we're not in the booth. Oh, I am too. It's a perfect night for football, and we're about to get it underway as the Tigers have got it teed up at the 40, ready to kick it to from right to left. A couple of men back deep here for Chattooga. The man the furthest back is going to be Trey Smith. And tonight, the Darlington Tigers are in all their all-white uniforms. Got the purple letters and numbers. The Chattooga fans have been cued to make some noise. Here's the kickoff. It's going to be kicked towards the corner from Ryland Scott. And the ball is going to be loose. Diving for it are the Tigers. Who I came think the up? Tigers the, the have Tigers got have, Did they get it? No, I think the Chattooga Indians have got the football. Well, I think we've served sort of notice that uh, every play, kickoff, special teams, we're going to be on the spot for the ball, and we're going to want to control the game as much as we can. So the Indians will get ready to line everything up as we get ready to – uh-oh, they're going to kick this one off like again. A free kick coming. And I've got an answer on the moon from our buddy Steve Conrad, by the way. Okay. And we'll tell you about it here in just a couple of moments. He says, this is the hunter's moon, sometimes called the sanguine moon or blood moon. It will be best viewed on Sunday. It represents the time after the farmers have harvested their crops and hunters could see deer in the fields by the moonlight. Well, we saw a... Uh a collection, a family of deer at WLAQ when we were pulling out. We sure did. <laughs> so Ryland Scott gets ready to kick this one off again from I'm the I'm not sure what line. happened there. I don't know if they just the refs may have not had everything lined down and just said let's do a do over. Because I didn't see a flag. I didn't either. Yeah. Here we go. And we're Make kicking off from the forty, so for your Indians. Ryland trots to the ball again. Toe meets leather. We're underway. As Steve Conrad would say, hope those chin straps are buckled because we're rocking and rolling now. Billy Settlemore fields that one, and we're ready to go. He makes a fair catch. And, uh, I mean, being a high school player from the 70s and seeing what they do now, I'm sure there's a reason that they're coached to do that. But uh, kickoffs were made to run back. <laughs> And I have to tell you, Rick, one of the things we're going to have some challenges with, we're not up very high tonight, so it's kind of hard to tell what yard line they are on unless it's correct on the scoreboard when we're at certain angles. Uh, so right now I think they're starting off at the 20. But, again, I don't have a very good angle on that. But we they're, are. they're about the 18 to 20-yard line. 
So they will line Well, they started out at the 20. You're right. There's the snap. Quarterback's going to hand it off. Quarterback in the game, by the way, is going to be Brady Gross. Uh, sometimes you'll see snaps to Corey Gibson. Most of the highlights that I saw today watching Corey Gibson was the quarterback. And he's their senior quarterback that plays also with their uh, sophomore quarterback that we'll see a lot of. And they just mentioned on the PA that he's back on the field tonight, so he must have been injured okay. for the couple of games that I was able to watch a little bit of film from. They're going to send a wide receiver off to the far side, couple to the near side. Chatuga's in their red jerseys. They got black britches on, and their uniforms look a lot like the Utes, the Utah Utes. There's the snap. Gross takes the snap. He's going to hand it off. They run up the middle. Look at the wheels on that young man. He's going to be brought down, but he does get a pretty good pickup there on second down. That was Corey Gibson that we were just talking about. Well, the, uh, the hole that uh, Chatuga opened up was – really wide enough for him to break it further than he did. The closure that Tigers, number 24, Bowden Owens, put on uh, the ball carrier for the tackle may have been potentially touchdown saving. Well, that was a good run there again for Corey Gibbs, and that sets up a third down and one here for the Chatuga Indians. They'll shift some personnel around as they get ready to take this big snap. As the Tigers try to pin their ears back, here come the Indians. They'll be in tight for this particular formation. Quarterback Gross takes the snap, turns, hands it off, and he has stood up. That is not going to be enough to get the first down there, Rick. Well, the building wall or defensive line that are led by uh, Gus Gamage, Bryant Powell, Gatlin, Hancock, and others just – collapsed on the Chattooga ball carrier. They're going to have to punt it away. So a three and out here for the Chattooga Indians, and the ball is going to be kicked back to the Darlington Tigers. Got a dangerous man right there at the 42-yard line with Talon Shirey, always a step away from breaking the big one. No question about it. He's going to feel this if he can, and we'll just see if they kick it to him or away from him. Hunter Brown, the punter, is about to kick it away here for the Chattooga Indians as the Darlington Tigers again have Shirey. We may block this. And I, Slade Clevenger, no doubt, if he's out there, he'll try to get his hands on it. There's the kick, nearly blocked. It's kicked away. Shirey fields it. He's going to return. He's got it across midfield, stays up, and he is going to be brought down just inside Chattooga County territory. Yeah, number four, uh, Trey Smith for the uh, Indians brought him down along with some other Indians. And uh, we're going to have half the field to go, and that's what you want, uh, the battle for field position, first down Tigers. So the Tigers will open up their first drive of the football game on the Chattooga 48-yard line with first and 10 with 9.23 left to go in the first quarter. We're scoreless as Chattooga went three and out on their opening drive of the football game. Had a couple of good runs. The drive looked promising at the beginning, but Darlington was able to get those ears back and come up with a stop there and force the three and out. Our offensive line is so dynamic, I expect we're going to impose our will on the Indians on the interior line. Shotgun formation, Bow no one's in the backfield with good. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Talon Shirey, trying to get some room on the edge, stays up, breaks a tackle. He's going to be forced out of bounds, but that'll be a good pickup. With the angle, I had a hard time tracking how far he got, so we'll see how far they move the sticks. That's going to be over 10 yards, so he got a first down on the first play, Rick. It looks like he's between the 27 and 30-yard line of the Chattooga Indians, and we're going fast, Matt. Shotgun formation, three wide on the far side. Here's Good rolling that way. He's going to put the ball in the air towards the end zone. A leaping Talon Shirey almost hauls it in. It's going to be an incomplete pass for the Darlington Tigers setting up a second down. Well, you know, the thing about Jack Good is, you know, and I always say it every time I'm blessed to be in the booth with you, Matt, that the other position they have him down is, uh, if he's not playing quarterback, is linebacker. So he's tough. He's a head knocker, and he threw it into traffic in a small window, and Talon Shirey just about made the catch. Second and 10 from the 30 as Good gets ready to take the snap. He's going to have those trips to the right side again for this formation. Going to have Eli Thompson lined up split wide to the left. Good getting ready to take the snap. He's got the ball in his hands, turns, hands it off to Bow Noams right up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles, spins at the end of the play, and picks up a big chunk of yards on first down. It appears that the Tigers have the first down, and I mean Gus Gamage, uh, Powell, and Hancock and others plowed a road. They plowed a road. It's going to bring up third and one. They 
back to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Under center is good. Takes the snap, turns, gives it off, and running towards the end zone. It's going to be brought down. It's going to be Joel Lewenberg. A very, very hard run from him, and that gets the first down, and now the Tigers are in the red zone. Well, the hole he had to go through, you could drive a Mini Cooper through, and I thought Lowenberg was on his way to the end zone. Somebody barely tripped him up. And they run back to line, line of scrimmage very quick, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the field called by Chatuga. So we're going to do the same thing down the line. We're scoreless, 8:29 here left to go in the first quarter, but the Tigers have got it in the red zone. We come back in 30 seconds. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. for the flooded receivers on the left side. And if the linebackers and the defensive backs go with the receivers, he tucks it and runs it. And he makes such precise, concise decisions. He threw it in that small window to number 21 for the Tigers, uh, Mr. Rush, and he made a catch. And there's still another name there that you're going to hear that's very capable for Darlington, along with a uh, plethora of names to make plays. Anytime anybody ever says the word plethora, I think of the movie Three Amigos. Okay. Did you ever see? I'm sorry. Yes, I did see it. And we're going to have a plethora of athletes make plays tonight. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a harvest moon. And do we do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't know about the blood moon, but we'll go with harvest moon. Okay. <laughs> Rick Lundy is a true great American. That's man, right, I tell, I tell you. you. Matt, it's good to be here with you. God bless you. <laughs> and uh, Sandy and Elizabeth, uh, I haven't seen you in a while. I miss you. We love you. And uh, enjoy the broadcast. The Tigers have got it teed up. We're going to watch Ryland Scott kick it away here from the 40-yard line. He trots up to the football. And ball's in the air. That's going to be a fairly short kick. It'll be fielded by Settlemeyer, and he is going to be brought down pretty much immediately. And so decent field position here for Chattooga. Uh, number 20, uh, four for the Tigers. Uh, you know, this is Ironman football. This is a single A, uh, Division One, seven A. And, you know, we're talking about guys that play on special teams, offense, defense. And number 24, Bowden Owens, on the kick team, makes the hit. Face mask on the defense to Tigers. 
So there was a face mask that was called against the Darlington Tigers, so the officials will march off the penalty yardage before we get the first play from scrimmage here from Chattooga. So a little gift for them there uh, that they will try to take advantage of. And I'm noticing and I'm looking at their expanded over the uh, uh, Internet. Uh, Brady Gross, their quarterback, is 6'6", 200-pound senior. Goodness gracious. So Chattooga is going to start at their own 49-yard line as they get ready for first and 10 after the face mask penalty sets them up with great field position. We get ready for the snap to Gross here in just a moment. He's going to line up a couple of wide receivers on each side, drops back, puts the ball in the air, a little bit too much air under it, and that's going to be incomplete over the receiver's head. Well, quarterback Gross will throw it that way all the 10 times, and it's the timing of pitch and catch, and it was just barely out of the reach. But I will say he put it the only place to where the Darlington defender couldn't intercept it. We had him covered. No doubt about it. So that sets up second and 10 from the 49-yard line. Chattooga on their side of the field. They went three and out their first drive of the game. Darlington would answer with a touchdown. Drive capped off with a one-yard run from Lowenberg, standing up as he ran into the end zone. Nobody touched him, and Darlington's up 7-0 to zero as we get ready for Gross to take the snap. couple wide receivers on the short near side of the field. They're going to hand it off and try to run wow. it to the left side, and a wall of Gross, Tigers Gross is waiting. Hand it off to number three, Zayden Perry. Zayden Perry, the ball Gross carrier. I mean, that's a, a pack of Tigers. Uh, uh, Gus Gamage, uh, Talon Shirey, and others uh, really made a big hit. It's like he seems to be moving for the uh, line of scrimmage, but we're controlling the uh, point of attack, and then the wall of Darlington Tigers collapses on the running backs Gross of the line, Indians. Gross lines his team up from the 49 with a third down and nine coming up here on this next snap. Going to send a couple of wide receivers on each side of the formation. In the backfield remains Aiden Perry as we get ready for the next play to begin. Third down and nine. Here comes the snap, dropping back. Gross puts the ball in the air, and it is going to be caught. I thought it bounced up to him, but it didn't. He's off to the races to the 20-yard line, breaks to the near side, and is going to scamper out of bounds at about the 14. We do have a flag on the field, though. Yeah, I think we may have a block in the back against the uh, Chattooga Indians, but, you know, you know we got to give credit where credit's due. Number one for the uh, uh, Billy Settlemeyer just – Caught the ball and made things happen, Matt. He it, that was these are the athletes you're talking about. You see both on the basketball court when you call the games uh, for the Tigers, and as well as the football. He's waving the flag off, so I don't know. Maybe uh, they didn't have the best view and they dropped it to have a discussion. So they're going to be first and ten for the uh, Chattooga Indians uh, deep in uh, Tiger territory at about the 15 and a half yard line. They started the drive at the 49 yard line. A big play as you pointed out. Now the Chattooga Indians have the football in the red zone trying to answer the bell. Darlington scored the first touchdown of the game. Lead at 7 to 0. We've got left in the first quarter. Gross lines him up. He's going to have Zayden Perry in the backfield with him. Four wide receivers set. Man will go in motion. There's the snap. They give to the motion man. That's Quarry Gibson, and he's going to be tripped up around the 10, so they are able to manage close to five yards on uh, And we're going to see, the once again, the wheel imposed by the Darlington Tigers up on the uh, – line of scrimmage in the point of attack. Uh, Gus Gamage made a stop and uh, ran him down. So, I mean, we've just got guys, Hancock, Gamage, Powell, all up front that are mean and ready to play. 6.35 and the clock running in the first quarter. The Indians go back to line of scrimmage here with second down and five with the ball on the 10 in the red zone, threatening to score. Yeah, they, they have uh, wide outs both sides. And we're going to have a flag that comes in. Was that? No, it wasn't a delay of game. I think there were still seven or eight seconds on the play clock. Illegal the false procedure. Start. Mm. Against the uh, Indians. I didn't see the false start, but I guess somebody kind of nudged forward on the interior line. He seemed to drop it right in the middle of the interior line. Well, that's going to back him up five yards, bringing up a second down and 10. Now they're back to the 15 yard line. Good for the Tigers, the very thing the Indians do not need. So the Indians will get lined up here as we get ready for this second down play. I'll be surprised if this is not a pass play by Gross. I mean, he's 6'6". He's looking over the line of scrimmage and uh, 
He's, he's got a good view of the field. Zayden Perry in the backfield with him. There's the snap. They're going to run it up the middle. He's got some oh, room, wow. and he is going to try it untouched into the end zone. That was a 15-yard run for Zayden Perry, and they answer back, Rick. And now you got a light show here that you can see over the video feed. Yes, you can. Wow. And uh, I hope when they turn them off enough, they come back on where we can finish the game. But I'll say this to you. <laughs> we did not have – our big lineman in on that play, and I think maybe they give credit where credit's due, crossed this up, and we thought it would be a pass play. But our, our biggest lineman, when he ran it right up the middle, weren't there uh, by substitution that we had done. We get ready for the point after attempt here by big number 72, one Roke. Roque, excuse me, Roque. He's a captain for them tonight. And the kick is on the way, and it's got plenty of leg, and it is right through the upright. So we're tied up at seven apiece. Seven apiece, uh, Chattooga Indian. Not to be uh, uh, thought to be an easy game. Uh, the last in the region is not affecting them at all. They're here to try to give Darlington Tigers a game. So we've got 5.54 left to go here in the opening quarter of play. Chattooga playing at home tonight. It's their homecoming night. They did all the festivities before the game. A lot of times you see them bring out the homecoming court at halftime. Did a little different up here tonight. Uh, but I tell you what, man, the folks up in Chattooga County, they got a big crowd tonight. They love their athletics programs, and they're, they're here tonight to have some fun and watch some football. Good crowd, good food, perfect weather, and a harvest moon. <laughs> <laughs> You're loving that, aren't you? Yeah, I'm dead, dead. you'll hear that eight or <laughs> 12 more times tonight. But do you know the Neil Young song, Harvest Moon? Yes. What a beautiful song it that is. is. Absolutely. And this uh, red hue that shoots up their uh, uh, lighting for their field is pretty cool. Roque kicks it away, and a fair catch is going to be signaled by Timmy Smith of the Darlington Tigers. So going to have good field position again, Absolutely. about 35. Absolutely. 35-yard line, Timmy Smith. He was he did the right thing. He made the catch. And you'll hear his name. He'll be putting a hit on someone. He just signaled for the fair catch for the kickoff for the Indians, and the Tigers are set up on the 35. And I would chance to say that we're going to be eager to try to get that touchdown back. I would happen to agree with you, Rick. But the Tigers are going to line up at the 35-yard line. Their first drive, they would be on the Tatuga 48, would score on a one-yard touchdown run from Joel Owenberg, the sophomore. And the Tigers get ready to line up with D-Man Floyd in the backfield with Jack Good. They're going to send a couple of wide receivers to each side of the formation here for this first and 10, working right to left. There's the snap. Good. It's got company, and he's going to take a loss and a sack. Did a decent job of protecting the football, but that's a big loss there for the Tigers on first down. Well, credit where credit's due. Once again, number 52, uh, Richard Bass, a junior for the Chattooga Indians, got in there and made his way in and made the play. So the Tigers lost 10. That's going to bring up a second down and 20. The ball at the 25-yard line, shotgun formation, four-wide set. They give it to Demarion Floyd. He's wrapped up and brought down, and that's going to be another loss, Rick. And let me tell you, man, this doesn't look like a team that should be one in five to me. No, it doesn't at all. And it's the 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 fight that's in the uh, Chattooga Indians we're seeing tonight. Xavier Gray made a big hit for them on uh, Floyd, and that's unusual for Floyd to go down at first contact. Indeed it is. You can expect a lot of what they call yak yards from that young man, yards Absolutely. after contact. Going to have four wide receivers here for this third down and 21. There's not a lot of plays in the playbook for this one. There's the snap. Dropping back is good. Puts it in the air. A screen pass. Connects. A flag comes in, and he gets hit right away. The defense was ready for the screen. They absolutely were. It looks like there's going to be a hold against the Darlington Tigers given the placement of the flag. So that holding against the Tigers. And uh, the very thing that the Indians wanted to do and that the Tigers wanted to avoid is happening at the moment at least. The Indians think they can win. Uh, the band's fired up. The uh, student section's fired up. It's their homecoming. And, and they're going to uh, live in the moment. And in the moment, they're 7-7 seven to seven with the Tigers, and we're having to punt it away. Tommy Bethel set to punt it away. He's standing at the 10-yard line of the far hash. We get ready for the snap to him. Going to have a man back here about midfield here for the Chattooga Indians to attempt to return the kick. 
And here comes the snap a little bit low. He pulls it up, gets the kick away clean, and that is going to go take a bounce and go out of bounds. Close to midfield, we'll see where they line them up. I'd say it's between the 45 and 50-yard line of the Indians where they'll have it first and 10. So the Indians get a three and out there on defense. Chatuga gets the ball back. They answered the bell after Darlington's first score of the game, and we got a top ball game at seven apiece with 4.30 left to go in the first quarter. And we had minus yards on that three and out. So Chatuga's going to start at their own 49-yard line, so now field position swings in their favor. Brady Gross gets ready to line his team up, and they got... A tie ball game and a lot of momentum right now on their side. In the backfield with him is Zayden Perry. He will flank quarterback a little bit shaded to his left, it looks like. Going to have four wide set, two on each side of the formation. Man motions, and a flag comes in. Maybe a little bit too much motion up there at the line of scrimmage. I think it, it looks like the illegal procedure against the Indians. Someone on their interior line, I think, got a little eager. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first down. So first down and 15 here for the Indians as this drive, starting with good field position, has moved backwards on the first play or before the first play because of a procedural penalty. Looks like they're on about the 43 or 47. We've got I think it's the, the best 43. Angle. I think yeah, you're okay. right. right. Well, let's call it 44. What the heck? Let's do that. <laughs> Four wide set, Gross getting ready to take the snap. He drops back, got company, gonna throw a screen up the middle of the field to Perry, and he is going to be brought down by a host of Tigers. And it may be better to call who wasn't on the stop for the Tigers than who was. It was a den full of Tigers, and their middle screen was, it developed slow, and we had it defended well. Now, his last name's Perry, talking about Zayden. I wonder if there's any relation to the great Sonoris Perry who played here, I don't know, 12 or 13 years ago, played in the NFL for a number of years and played college football at Louisville. Yeah, he was their difference maker and probably their marquee player that's come out of here in uh, the last, what, 30 or 40 years? No doubt. Four wide set here for this second down along. Dropping back is Gross, puts it in the air, connects with his wide receiver, Dan Meyer, and he's going to be hauled out of bounds. He's going to be well short of the first down, obviously, but he got back some of the yards that they had lost, setting up a third down, and I believe nine or ten. Uh, Gross Sr., 6'6", he twirled it well toward the Darlington sideline. He got back uh, half the yardage. Uh, he's third and long eight, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot of passing from Gross tonight. I mean, uh, we're going to need to intercept him or sack him. So the Indians go back to the drawing board here for third down and nine, seeing if they can convert a third and long and keep this drive going. And they're right back to where the drive started, right at the 39-yard line or very close to midfield as we get ready for the snap. Gross takes it. He drops back. He's going to put it in the air, and that's going to be dropped for an incomplete pass. Couldn't quite get his hands around it. No, it was there. It was where, as a receiver, you touch it, you need to catch it. He had both hands on it. Uh, and we'll probably see plays out of number 11 in the future. But once again, we're a half a step right with the receiver, and we had good coverage. Gross is on. He's, he's accurate with his passes thus far. So with 2.34 left to go here in our first quarter of play, we're tied at seven, and we're going to see Chatuga punt the ball away here to the Darlington Tigers. Again, back at the 21-yard line is going to be Talon Shirey. And he had a good return uh, the last one he fielded, and it wouldn't surprise me if he breaks one. And here comes the punt. It is going to drop and roll back inside the 20 all the way down to about the 10-yard line. So a good punt there by number 19, Hunter Brown. Yeah, those are the ones you like to see fair caught by uh, uh, the Tiger receiver, but probably Talon Shirey being right there and in the theater of it, he had three or four uh, Chatuga Indians hovering as the ball was coming down, so the better decision was to let it roll. We've got it on the 10. Let's see what the offense can do. I think we're ready to open it up. So the Tigers come back to line of scrimmage just shy of the 10-yard line with first and 10. they got to go 90 yards to get some points. 
And we're all tied up at seven apiece with 225 left to go and a pretty fast moving quarter under the harvest moon here at the Little Big Horn. Yeah, it's a, it's a harvest moon. It's, uh, you know, many things for farmers, but I think, you know, that to harvest those crops with that uh, full moon would be excellent. Shotgun formation. Bowden Owens in the backfield. They're going to give it to him, and he goes off to the right side, and it's going to be stood up. I don't believe they got anything on that play. No, uh, uh Less than a yard. It seemed to develop slow. Uh, it could be that the uh, interior line of the Indians may just be nearly submarining or just going into the waist of our players, just try to clog the middle. Because uh, I know our offensive line is going to figure out how to rip these holes open. Ashton Albers is going to be split wide to the near side. Tigers working right to left in the slot here on this near side is going to be Talon Shirey. A couple dangerous weapons there. Shotgun formation for second down and nine. Here's the snap to good. He is going to hand the ball off to Bowden Owens. Runs around the edge on the near side. And then he pummels a couple of defenders as he gets the yard. The extra yard there at the end to get the first down. First down, he, he, you're right. He he squared his shoulders and ran behind, it, ran behind his pads well and just rammed it for the first down. So that brings it out to the 22-yard line. Darlington Tigers with a first down. Once again, Powell and Gamage and Hancock folded down what would be the right defensive side of the Chattooga line of scrimmage by the left uh, offensive side of the Darlington Tigers. Owenberg in the backfield. They're going to hand it off to Eli Thompson. He's following Lowenberg, stays up, breaks a couple of tackles. He's across the 40 and down to midfield before they get him out of bounds. What a run by Eli Thompson. Eli Thompson picks and uh, darts his way through. And what I'm very impressed with, obviously with Eli Thompson's run, is 40 yards downfield was number 66, Gus Gamage leading him. And that was about a 25-yard run right Easily. there from Eli. And now the Tigers have got a fresh set of downs almost at midfield, still on their side of the field. Shotgun formation, trips to the near side, a handoff to Demarion Floyd, lowers his helmet and gets all the way down to the 40-yard line, I believe, before they haul him in. Uh, so a good pickup there on first down for the Tigers. Uh, Demarion Floyd has deceptive strength. He can uh, accelerate and make it through a hole, but if there's not a hole there, he's going to make you account for having to tackle him. And, it, and it, Steve just hit us up. It's a hunter's moon, which is different from the harvest moon. Okay, so well, we're going to go with a hunter's moon, and we did see this. I just, at WLAQ, didn't we? We did, and I yeah. just wanted to make reference to the song. Yeah, I did. I, I think it was an excellent reference. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a timeout? What do we have? That's the yeah. end of the quarter. The end yep. of the quarter. All right, we're tied up at seven apiece. Darlington with the football. When we come back, we're going to send it back to the studio for one minute down the line. We're glad you're with us. We'll be back. My name is Ryan Somerville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're within guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. I know if you're watching on TV, you can see it on the screen, but it's 7-all as we start our second quarter. Darlington with the football and a second down and four coming up here from the Chattooga side of the field. Now working from left to right as we swap sides of the field uh, in between quarters, of course. And now they get ready to snap the ball on second and four. Man goes 
motion. They're going to hand it to the motion man on a sweep out to the left side, trying to get to the edge. The defense does a pretty good job of stringing him out. I got screamed by some players there, so I'm not sure how far he got there, Rick. It looks like he got the first down, or he's very close. I can see where they're marking it. They're looking at it to determine whether or not to move the sticks. But uh, Darlington, once again, is kind of a student body left. It developed slow, and he stalked. Uh, behind his blockers to look for a, a, a seam to run up. He didn't get the seam credit to the Indians, but it's close. And it was brought back. So this oh, it is was. Bring back a second down and eight for the Tigers as they get lined up. Second down and nine, rather. I don't know why that was brought back, but it certainly was. Second down and a long eight. So they'll line up with Demarion Floyd to the right of Jack Good, the quarterback, three wide set here for second and nine. There's the snap, going to give it to Demarion Floyd, runs out the edge on the left side. He's got some room running down the sidelines, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds after getting the first down and more. So a big play for D-Man. Well, uh, once again, Demarion Floyd, he's a patient runner. He's calculated. Uh, he's stalking the moment to hit that seam, and – he, he was able to stay behind his blocking for a nice game for the Tigers. And we're going fast. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Shotgun formation. Dropping back is Jack Good. Going to put it in the air. It looked like, nope, he's going to have to tuck it and run. He is going to be up. Picks up about nine yards before he's pummeled by Billy Settlemeyer. Took a hard hit. But he got up quick. He did one of those odd situations where the person in front of him went low. And as he slowed up to deal with that low lick, the guy from behind him caught him up high. So that brings up a second one after the nine-yard pickup from the quarterback, Good, using his legs. And he's a tough cookie, uh, Jack Good. There's the snap. He's going to hand it off, run back to the near we side go. from Demarion Floyd. Stutter step, stays up, and jumps at about the 13-yard line before he goes down. So another big pickup, a first down for the Darlington Tigers. And once again, you see how far downfield Powell and Hancock uh, – are blocking for uh, the runner and uh, excellent stalk block by number 19, Braden Bell for the Tigers. Ball at the 14 yard line, first and 10 for the Tigers in the backfield, Demarion Floyd with Jack Good. Good turns, hands it off to Demarion, stays up, carries a man with him down to the eight yard line, a hard run of about five yards. Well, he, the guy grabbed him by the waist and then just dropped his own weight and Floyd carried him three of the five yards. You're right. So second and five for the Tigers from the eight-yard line. They're going to change a little personnel here and get ready for this next snap. You're going to have Demarion Floyd in the backfield with good. Also, Lowenberg is in here for this package. You got Braden Bell split wide to the right. A couple of receivers on the left side as we get ready for the snap here on second and five from the eight. Balls in the hands of Demarion Floyd. Goes up the middle, and he's going to be brought down inside the five, getting closer to the goal line. I think they're going to line him up probably around the three-yard line. Uh, they are, and he went off to the left, and uh, Gus Gamage and others are getting pancake blocks. They're opening up some holes. We're running the ball now. First and goal here from the two. There's the snap. Demarion gets the rock, and he is going to be dropped just short of the goal line. At oh, he's he's a touchdown. He's in. My touchdown. goodness, he's in. He got the two yards he needed, and the Tigers score again. Well, when he got low, he kept turning. You're right, Matty, and he got in. Uh, uh, he, you better not stop tackling Demarion Floyd or any of the Tiger running backs until they are completely on the ground. And I should let you know that this Darlington scoring celebration is brought to you by La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. We got the extra point coming up, but for all your life's celebration moments, you need to call La Scala to help make them special. Call today to book your holiday parties or special events. That's La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. Here comes the kick. It's on the way a little bit low, and it is going to be through, though, so 14-7, to 7, Tigers on top. Uh, it's a good drive. It's a good drive to recover from uh, some instances to where uh, there were some bright spots for the Chattooga Indians, but that was a conquering drive for the Tigers, and we needed that. We needed it, Matt. No doubt about it, so we'll get ready for the Tigers to kick it back here to the Chattooga Indians. 
Titans. We want to remind you at halftime, we'll give you some scores for some other games that are going on tonight. And just to kind of give you a little bit of a preview of what we'll be talking about, our Murchies at Pepperell, Trines at Coosa, so some other 7A Division I games. You've got Fannin County at Model moving on to AA. Then you got Harrelson County at Rotmart, Sonorville at Central Carrollton, Cedar Towns at Heritage, a couple undefeated teams playing there, Hiram at Calhoun, Cartersville at Cass, and Sequoia at Rome. Dade County has the night off, so we're going to have a lot of games to talk about at halftime. Well, you know, is there anything better than on a, a crisp, perfect uh, fall evening to be at, at any high school football game? Obviously, we're very prejudiced for the Darlington Tigers, but if you can get out to any local high school football game, folks, you need to give yourself a treat. And, you know, we've talked about it throughout the night. When we started the game, we were in the 70s, and now we've got to be in the 60s at this point. This is starting to feel it's like perfect. football weather is. It's it great. is great. With I, Gunter's moon. I got a short sleeve <laughs> shirt on, and I'm a little chilly, and I yeah. love it. It's great. Here comes the kick. This is going to be a line drive from Tommy Bethel. That's going to roll all the way. Did that get in the end zone? That's a just back. Barely, My just goodness. Barely it did. Not surprised that Tommy Bethel gets it to the end zone, but the way that that was low flying and then kind of rolled all the way into the end zone, I was kind of uh, surprised that the turf didn't stop it from going I, that I was, far. And, and one of the things you just mentioned, natural turf field, the smell of the grass is wonderful, isn't it? It's beautiful. It is. It really is. It is. So the Indians are going to line up at their own 20. We've been playing field position there for a little while, and now they're going to have average field position to start this drive. We need to put some pressure on this 6'6 six, six quarterback, and until we do, he's going to try to have a senior night on homecoming. So Brady Gross is going to line him up first and 10. Going to send a wide receiver off to the far side. Couple off now to the far side, one on the near side. In the slot is Quarry Gibson. We talked about how fast that young man is. He'll go in motion. They're going to they hand it, it to Gibson. the motion yeah. man, and he's going to be brought down. The defense was not fooled at all. Wow, uh, Gus Gamage and also number four, Joel Lowenberg, and number 10, uh, our, our quarterback, Jack Good, uh, put the uh, brakes on the running back on that little crossbuck play. So they lost about two yards on that play. That brings up a second down and 12 here for the Chattooga Indians. Working from right to left, playing at home tonight on their homecoming night. Putting up a fight against the Darlington Tigers. Undefeated Darlington Tigers 6-0 come to town, and Chattooga has come to play tonight here on their home field. Buddy Wendell Field and the Little Bighorn. Here's the snap on second and 12. That's going to be a screen pass at the middle. Connects with number nine, Xavier Gray. He's a great basketball player, and he's a heck of a wide receiver apparently as well. He's across midfield for a first down and then Darlington territory. And just like you said, great athlete from a steel position of catching the ball. His ability to accelerate was exceptional, and he's put it into Darlington territory. Let me tell you, man, I watched him play basketball last year as a freshman. And if he continues to develop, he is going to be special. I mean, he is really, really good. And he looks now like he'd be a special two-sport athlete. Xavier Gray that made that catch, a sophomore this year, playing for the Chattooga Indians. Gross is going to line him up first and 10. Now they got it at the 47-yard line of Darlington's side of the field, working right to left. We've got to get to Gross. We've got to get to the quarterback. So the Tigers perhaps going to dial up pressure here on this play. There's the snap. They get to him, but he gets the ball out quick, and it's heading toward Quarry Gibson, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Well, number one, Talon Shirey was in his uh, pocket, and uh, a perfect pass wasn't going to complete that if we know how Talon, uh, Talon is great as a defender. But uh, we had a lot of guys back there, but he just got rid of it quick, didn't he? He really did. So and, it, and that's what we're going to see a lot of. I think you're going to see a senior-minded quarterback to try to find a way to complete a play. Second down and 10. We get ready for the snap with 8.13 left to go here in the first quarter. Darlington leading at 14-7 on the road here in Chattooga County. Going to have two wide receivers on each side of the formation here for the Indians who have it at the Darlington 47-yard line for this second down. And 10, here comes the snap. Dropping back is Gross, puts the ball in the air, and that's going to sail over the intended receiver's head. Quarry Gibson, another incomplete pass, setting up a third and 10. It's an out route to the uh, left side of Gross's uh, uh, offensive line. He had the time. He was just high. 
He overthrew him. But we had coverage once again. We had a guy right on his shoulder, uh, Talon Shirey. So third and 10 here for the Chattooga Indians as the Darlington Tigers try to get a stop here. The Indians got it across midfield on a big pass play to Xavier Gray just a few plays ago. And taking time between snaps here. They're going to run it all the way down to the end of the play clock before they snap it. Quarterback. Did they get it all? Game? Yeah. It was close. No, nope, a timeout was called. I guess in fear of having to delay a game, they've called a timeout. They were cutting it close. So they were. We're going to take one as well. Darlington leads at 14-7, to 7, a third and 10 from the Darlington 47 coming up for Chattooga when we come back in 30. Did like what they saw on the field there. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. Live in Somerville, Georgia, up here in Chattooga County. We're at the Little Big Horn. They're playing on Buddy Wendell Field tonight. Chattooga Indians playing at home on homecoming. The Darlington Tigers here to try to spoil it. Up 14 to 7 with 8.08 left in our first half of play, and this has been a really fun competitive football game so far. Well, exactly right, Matt. Uh, the Chattooga Indians are trying to find a way to win this game. They know where they're at in the region standings, and they know that they have nothing to lose but yet another game, so they're battling. They're battling. There's the snap a little high, pulls it down, puts it in the air, a little bit wobbly, and it's going to be over the head of the receiver. A flag comes in, and I guess that's going to be a pass interference call. It looks like that uh, uh, I thought it was uncatchable and any well. incidental contact by Eli Thompson was not any, didn't create any problems for the uh, receiver to get to the ball. But alas, that's why we have these referees and they have called pass interference against the Tigers. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised to see the flag on that play. But nonetheless, that is what the case is. So they'll march off the penalty yards here. And that's a gift for the Chattooga Indians as they're now going to line up. And with is, the first that, down. is that only the second penalty against the uh, Darlington Tigers? I don't have a way of keeping up with all the down. stats and stuff, unfortunately, but they haven't had a tremendous amount. That's for sure. We had a holding penalty. I remember mm -hmm. that. And and maybe that's only the second. Mind. So that gives them a first down, first and 10 from the 32-yard line over on the Darlington side of the football field. And Gross gets ready to take the snap. He's going to have Zayden Perry in the backfield with him just behind him. Man goes in motion. There's the snap to Gross. He's going to hand it off to Perry, and we got another whistle. And again, we are... Watching for the officials call here on this one. It was against Tatuga. Tatuga, uh, I think, really, with their man in motion, he went all the way behind their quarterback when he was in the shotgun. I'm not really clear on why that's their scheme, but someone on the offensive line is getting a miscue either from the Darlington Tigers stepping in and, and faking. Uh, if you can visualize you having to sit still, ladies and gentlemen, somebody kind of coming at you and stepping towards you, that's what the Tigers are effective at doing and drawing the Indians offsides. So this brings up first and 15 from the 37-yard line on Darlington side of the field. Chattooga with the football, trailing by seven, puts the ball in the air, and that is going to be intercepted by the Darlington Tigers. Coming down with it is going to be Jack Good. And number 51 for the uh, Darlington Tigers, Gatlin Hancock, 
said hello in a less cordial way than quarterback Gross is going to want to experience again right when he let it go. And I think that put air under it and no distance to it. And, of course, Jack Good just caught it in center field. So the Tigers get the ball back with 7.34 left to go here in the first half. They're going to have first and 10 with the ball on the 20 after the Jack Good interception. And now Jack Good, who just intercepted the ball, will line his team up on offense and get ready for the first play of their next drive with Demarion Floyd in the backfield with him just behind him. He turns, hands it off to Demarion Floyd, and he is going to be tripped up after a short game. By number 52. <laughs> Joe Lowenberg took his block 12 yards downfield. <laughs> I mean, that's the discipline that this Arlington uh, coaching staff has with these players. Second down and seven here for the Tigers with the ball at their own 23-yard line. They're going to send a couple of wide receivers off to the far side. Now they'll split a couple here to the near side. Shirey and Braden Bell are going to be on the near side, by the way. Now, Ten seconds on the play clock here for the Tigers to work with. Good is getting ready to take the snap, and he is going to turn and going to put the ball in the air. Connects with Talon Shirey. A flag is going to come out. I believe there was a late hit on the quarterback there. There Rick. was definitely a late hit on the quarterback, and uh, it wasn't anything that uh, uh, the player for the Indians should uh, have done or be proud of. It's going to be 15 yards in a first down, and uh, Jack got up slow, but, you know, he completed the pass, and he made the the uh, screen right pass, but uh, you can't rough the quarterback that way. So now a penalty is going to bite the Chattooga Indians, and now the Tigers are going to have it at the 49-yard line with a fresh set of downs working from left to right, leading this one on the road 14-7. to We're getting late here in our first half of the football game. Well, we've, we're getting the play sent in. We have some personnel changes, but we have plenty of time, 27, 26 on the play clock. So we're very deliberate. We know what we're doing on offense, and we're going to take this in. Jack Good takes the snap. He's going to swing it out to the left side to Demarion Floyd, trying to get their playmaker out in space, but the defense is able to string out the play and make the stop, and so he's going to be dropped for a loss. You know, credit where credit's due, uh, the Chattooga Indians have a lot of pursuit, and they're playing to the echo of the whistle. Uh, they are. So that's going to be a loss of close to four yards. Uh, let's say three, so second down and 13 here for the Tigers. For the Indians. As they get ready to take the snap from what looks like about the 47. There's the snap. Going to hand it off to Demarion Floyd. He goes up the middle this time. He has he got goes. a lot of green grass in front of him. And they're going to haul him in at about the 25-yard line on the opposite side of the field. So he comes back with a really big play. And right up the gut, right up the middle, right where Gamage and Powell and Hancock are. We're going fast. So a 30-plus yard play there for the Tigers and Demarion Floyd. As you mentioned, hurry up, first and 10. There's a snap. Bal Noens gets the ball, and he is going to be pulled down by his jersey after a pickup of close to 10 yards. Depending where the spot is, he may have got another first down. I think he might be a little bit short. Nope, they're, they're moving the chains. Moving the chains, first down. Uh, that was one of those uh, – uh, suppressed sprints he was held by his jersey and he drug that guy along shotgun formation trips to the near side a turn and a handoff to bowden owens he follows a good block gets inside the 10 and that's going to set up a second down here for the tigers once the again a pancake block by gus gamage the guys on the interior line i can't say enough about them uh, they're doing their job and they're least heralded on the field because of what we call the positions that are most noticeable to get to score the touchdowns. I don't like calling them the skill positions because how skillful is it every play to slam your head and shoulder pads in there to block for those other guys. Second and four from the 10 yard line here for the Darlington Tigers. They're gonna send a couple of wide receivers to the near side in the slot over here is Eli Thompson here for the Tigers. There's a snap, gonna give it off to Bowden Owens again. And he is gonna be brought down. I might have taken a loss on that play of a yard or two. Yep, he did. Sets up third down. Number eight, uh, Parker Huff. Made the stop, I believe, for that. We've got an injured player. I think it's an Indian. Hopefully, it's only a cramp. 
Glad you're with us tonight on WLAQ AM 1410, 96.9 FM, or the live video stream from Darlington School. It's always a pleasure to get the opportunity to get out on Friday nights and be able to broadcast these games for you. And just want to thank my partner in crime here tonight. Rick Lundy for filling in for Ian Griffin. He's helped me out several times over the last couple of seasons. It's been great to reconnect with you and have the opportunity to talk football with you a few hours on Friday nights a couple Good, times a year. Goodness, Matt, I feel the same way. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, someone could be doing in a fall on a Friday night, but selfishly, I would say there's nowhere else I'd rather be, and I appreciate the opportunity to be with you again. And I got to tell you, Rick, I hadn't had a jacket on um, at all this fall so far, and it may happen coming up at half may happen. Tonight. <laughs> That's right. But then again, I just may let the, the cool air right. hit me with my short yeah. sleeves on and yeah. just enjoy it. And In the midst of the it. hunter's moon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Well, now seven. he's up. And number 17, let, let's oh, look. He, he's a put-together gentleman. He is, he is uh, Jemias Foster, a, a junior, and he's a tight end and defensive end, a big young man. And uh, he's walking off, thank goodness, predominantly on his own speed and strength. So now his last name's Foster. I'm sure you probably remember Isaac and Isaiah Foster, who played here several years ago. We yes. called him the two-headed monster. Absolutely, My goodness. absolutely. They they've got to be uh, uh, from the same community and the Foster family because he's a big guy and he looks like he's going to take a break. But uh, the Tigers are already out, lined up, ready to go. This is third and six. Ball at the 11 yard line in the red zone. Jack Good with Bowden Owens in the backfield with him. Man goes in motion. That's Joel Owenberg. There's the snap. They're going to fake the handoff to Owens. Dropping back to throw is good. Ball in the air. Beautiful. Wide open receiver. He connects. And that's another Darlington touchdown in the end zone. It's going to be Bowden Owens with a touchdown catch. And Brent Bell went into his bag of misdirection. He had uh, going left to right as we're looking at the field. Splits. Uh, uh, twins right and he had a delayed uh, route on the left side and Jack Goode carried it out to perfection and excellent blocking by the line will give Goode the time to carry it out. So Jack Good with a touchdown pass as we get ready for Rylan Scott to try to punch through the extra point and make this a 21 to 7 two score ball game. Kick is on the way and it is through and it is 21 to 7 in favor of your Darlington Tigers. Well somebody's hopping the fence and going in the woods for that Rylan Scott <laughs> kick. It was a line shot, and it was gaining height as it passed through the uprights. So an 11-yard touchdown pass to Bowden. Owens, and that is how the Darlington Tigers are going to get their third score of this football game. And we still have 348 left to go here in the first half. Well, it, it seems as the offense is on the field each series, we're getting more fine-tuned and more fine-tuned. And that last play was an excellent example of it. It was set up to uh, appear that we were going right to the Twins' right, and then someone gets loose and sneaks over into the left side corner of the end zone, and it's uh, Braden Owens for the touchdown. And I do want to take this opportunity while we have a moment to mention the camera crew tonight, Thomas Patterson, Benton Potts, also graphics tonight from Uta Patterson, the Gopher, Claire Patterson, brought a couple of waters early. We appreciate that kind of treatment. We re really do. And then, of course, the director tonight, Nathan Patterson, and, of course, Northwest Georgia Media providing the video for Darlington School. They have done a tremendous job on that this year. Well, you know, uh, when Mr. Patterson was visiting with us earlier, you could just see the joy in his face when he successfully got everything IT together and made it all work, and it doesn't work without him. Line drive kick. It'll be fielded at the 10 and brought out. Corey Gibson's got it being chased around by a few Tigers, and it was kind of a little bit of adventure getting it up <laughs> off the ground. Odd development it, to it. And it gave the Tigers a lot of time to get down and bring him down at about the 15. Yeah, Parker Huff was the uh, re on the return for the Indians, and he seemed to have to run a good distance just to get to the what we used to call the wedge or maybe the the blocking scheme that maybe the Indians. I don't think you can do a wedge anymore to go up into the kick team and uh, – and then the kick team can't do things to try to bust the wedge anymore. They've, GHSA has outlawed those things, and rightly so. Four wide receiver set here for Chattooga as we get ready for Gross to take the snap. Corey Gibson goes in motion. we got a flag. It's going to be procedural. 
And that'll be a five-yard penalty against the Chattooga Indians. That's been an Achilles heel for them. Uh, they've had, what, three or four? Mm-hmm. And you start out now, uh, repeat first down, first and 15, and you're backed up to your own uh, nine-and-a-half-yard line. That is not where you want to be with the Darlington Tigers on the move. And I do want to mention significantly to this. We've got the speaker from the uh, yes, uh, public address announcer very close to us, folks. The speaker from the hot plate. It is. It <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> Here for the Darling, or excuse me, for the Chattooga Indians. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know I had it in me. There oh, comes the pass excellent. from Gross, and that is going to be caught. What an amazing grab. He was able to leap up and haul it in, and he also had a couple of Tigers. You could hear their footsteps. Oh, Talon Shirey is, uh, is it Talon, or who is it? No, it's, it's, uh, uh, number five for the uh, Darlington Tigers, Eli Thompson, is still looking at his empty hands, wondering how did that pass get through. We had excellent coverage. Once again, Gross is throwing in small windows, and he's taking those. Uh, he's got a bit of a gimp coming off the field, Gross does, and uh, we're putting pressure on him. We're hitting him as he's letting go of the ball often now. And there goes the PA uh, system again. Yep, they're doing the hokey pokey here tonight. I believe that they are. <laughs> I was never. And what a night to do it! I was never really one of the people that was enthusiastic when you're at the skating rink and they do the hokey pokey and y'all go out in the middle and do that kind of stuff. I was always the shy kid that just kind of wanted to stay on the sidelines. Yeah, when you're rolling around on four wheels uh, under each foot and you're sticking your right foot in and your right foot out, you better watch it. Yeah. Come on out here and do the hokey pokey. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm gonna be right over here. Well, well, actually, one of my jobs, uh, of many jobs as a teenager, was working at the roller skating rink in Cedartown. So uh, I know exactly those moments when we would have the hokey pokey on uh, people uh, sprawling out at moments that they needed to turn themselves around, so to speak. I don't do much hokey pokey. Don't do the electric slide. Or yeah, the, you got to watch you that know, stuff. You got to you got to stretch. You may pull a hammy. You got to watch it. <laughs> uh. My, my thing is, you know, that, but also I just look like an idiot. No, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Gross. Getting ready to take the snap here on third and eight. Ball on the 17-yard line. He's trying line. to command his troops, Matt. Chattooga still on their side of the field with it. There's the snap. He drops back. It's going to be a screen up the middle to Corey Gibson, one of his favorite targets. Stays up, uh, keeps his knees from hitting the ground, and gets the first down and adds some more yards at the end of the play. And once again, uh, number 11, Gibson, is a, a good-looking uh, young man. Uh, he's a sophomore. He's 5'9", 155, but uh, he – Shook off that first uh, contact by the Tiger player and made a first down. Shotgun formation, four wide set. A handoff is going to go to the right side. Number seven, Zayden Cook, and he's going to get about six yards on that play. Uh, Zayden Cook, 5'11", 175-pound sophomore. Once again, Coach Sean Peak said he has a lot of freshmen and sophomore, and now we're calling their names. Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game coming up after tonight's action last week. And it had been brewing for a while, but it was Slade Clevenger who blocked a punt, also caught a 77-yard touchdown pass, made a lot of big plays for the Tigers this year. We don't know who it's going to be this week. And very belatedly, we didn't get an opportunity. Oop, ball's on, on the turf. On the ground. He's After a it, difficulty with the exchange, he picks it up, is running. It's Trey Smith and is able to get back to where around the line of scrimmage was. But, uh, man. That was dangerous territory for Chattooga. Yeah, he was hit hard uh, by Darlington uh, Tiger Aiden Davis, 11th grader, and took his legs out from under him nicely. Was it Clevenger that blocked the extra point in the Northwest Whitfield game? That is we correct. learned that only yep. after we went off the air, and we want to say that again, just an exemplary young man, as all the Tigers are. Very opportunistic and trying to make the most of every play. Absolutely. At all times. And that's the thing. Like you said, five different Darlington Tigers scored last week. Who's going to make the big plays this week? 
course, here at Chattooga tonight. And then after tonight, only three more regular season games. Next week, it'll be back at Chris Hunter Stadium to host the Pepperell Dragons. That's one that everybody uh, looks forward to when that is on the list in terms of the schedule. You'll have all Murchie the following week, and that'll be at all Murchie. You'll have a bye week, and then uh, the regular season will wind down up. Well, actually, at Chris Hunter Stadium against Trine. Good good thing to get yeah. that game at the end of the year at And home. you know the, uh, the Pepperell Dragons hate losing to the Darlington Tigers Almost as much as I love the Darlington Tigers beating the Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Going to have a four-wide set here for the Indians for third and ten with a ball at the 31-yard line on their side of the field. 128 remains here in our first half of play. Corey Gibson motions to the right. There's the snap. Going to throw a screen up the middle. It was a quick pass that was out towards Zay. It's incomplete. And uh, he was open. He was there. And uh, Gross is getting the snap. And uh, I think if you look at even the, at the level of NFL players, Tom Brady tries to get rid of the ball in 2.7 seconds. And you look at Gross, and he's getting the ball, and he's not wanting our big interior line to get a hold of him. He's getting loose. He's, he's releasing the ball. So the Tigers are going to get the ball back, it looks like. One more time, potentially here in our first half, leading at 21 to 7. So a little bit of time to work with, and where this punt's going to happen from could potentially have pretty good field position. And remember, we start the second half with the ball. Exactly. Talon Shirey standing at the 43 yard line, working from left to right to field the punt. To kick it away is going to be Hunter Brown, and we got a whistle before they snap the ball. And is that a delay of game? Going to back them up five yards. So now they'll be punting from the 26-yard line. More potential for good field position here yeah, for the Tigers. The punter's going to actually That's kick right. it from about his own 12. So uh, I, uh, this could be an excellent time for the Tigers to block this punt. Well, they are certainly going to give their best efforts. You know that, no doubt. So we get ready for Hunter Brown to punt the ball away. And... The snap is on the way. Here comes the kick. Nearly got a hand on it. It is going to drop and roll close to midfield where it's going to be downed on Chattooga's side of the field, about the 47, I'm guessing. The Darlington Tigers are going to have excellent field position, and he seemed to almost abort the kick, and he just went ahead and kicked it, and he didn't go through his full stride because of the pressure. Darlington special teams, any moment that they can make the field position flip and get an advantage. That's what Tommy Atha does with the team. So an opportunity here for the Tigers to perhaps add to their lead with 118 left to go in the first half. And it looks like the Tigers, according to the scoreboard, it looks like they've got another timeout left. Braden Bell's gonna be split to the near side here for this first down play. Three wide receivers off to the far side of the formation, working left to right. Good's got the ball in his hands, drops back into a clean pocket, puts it in the air, and it's going to be a catch as he goes to the turf for Eli Thompson, a 12-yard pickup on first down. They'll move the chains quickly. Ball is going to be at the 35-yard line, and the Tigers come back to line of the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Absolutely. So Chad gonna... Good had plenty of time to throw that. He threw a dart to Thompson. Four wide set, first and 10 from the 35 on Chatuka's side of the field. A motion man goes. Here's the snap. Good. Looking for somebody to throw it to. And that, I believe, it's a is catch. Be, it was. Mark it. Thompson caught it as it was going. He had his arms around. under it. It's a catch. Oh, no, the I goodness thought it me. hit the ground and kind of bounced up. But the person is calling it good. It's well, incomplete. Said no good. No good. Yeah. No good on that play. The secondary official came in to the one beside Thompson that called it good and said it wasn't good after all. So we'll go again, second and 10. The ball at the 35 yard line, as you mentioned, second and 10 here for the Tigers. 46.6 seconds left on the clock. And we're almost to halftime with the Tigers leading it 21 to seven. Love, would love to have a score going into the locker room. And as you mentioned, get the ball coming out of it. Four, four, four wide set, three on the near side. There's the snap. Good. It's going to put it up the middle of the field. Connects with a wide open receiver. Tommy Bethel untouched as he goes into the end 
zone, 35-yard strike for a touchdown. Darlington Tigers score with 40.1 seconds left here in the first half and strike again. And it virtually was pick your Tiger with perfect pocket blocking. Uh, Jack Good picked out the uh, inside seam receiver, and Bethel, as you said, caught it and just stayed up and ran into the end zone. So Thomas Bethel with a 30 five-yard touchdown catch and run into the end zone. We get ready for the extra point, and that certainly changes things to get that score right here at the end of the half, and as you mentioned, getting the ball to start the second half, and here comes Ryland Scott on for the extra point, and that one, as you would probably guess, if you're just listening at home and don't have the video, <laughs> it was through. It was through, and it's landing on the track in the air. Good with 40 seconds, 40. The Tigers are doing what they came up here, I guess it would be, to do. And all cylinders are clicking. 28-7, 40.1 seconds remaining in the first half. So the Tigers will get ready to kick it back here to the Chatuga Indians. And we are glad you are with us tonight. We're glad to be here tonight because it is football weather. It's a beautiful Friday night. We've got the hunter's moon above us. Some, somewhat egg-shaped, not quite full, would you say? <laughs> not quite full. Yeah. But a beautiful night in Chattooga County. Uh, wonderful crowd, wonderful uh, conduct of everyone. It's just, you know, just like you want a football Friday to be in northwest Georgia. And, I ha and you mentioned this earlier, and it's been the experience every time I've been up here to call a football game or a basketball game, been up here a bunch over the years. Uh, but the administration and the athletic department and just the people here, they're always so kind to us and hospitable, and it, it gives us a lot of great hospitality, and that makes a big difference. Oh, it's all the difference in the world, and I think, you know, uh, the Darlington Tigers come up here and behave the same way, so it's a contest the way it should be. End over end kick that's going to drop in at the 26-yard line, unreturnable there for the Chattooga Indians. They'll get a fair catch right around the 26. By quarterback, Brady Gross. So, well, the tig I think the Tigers know uh, that – how many timeouts do we have left? Uh, one, one, I believe. You know, uh, based upon what uh, the Indians decide to do, uh, if they decide to throw the ball, a couple of incompletions, pop a timeout, you know, anything could happen in 40 seconds. You know how the Tigers are. So the ball at the 25-yard line for Chattooga as they get ready to open up this drive. We'll have scores that will reel in for you for halftime in just a little bit. Going to have four wide set here in the waning seconds here of our first half. Gross is going to hand it off to Zayden Perry. They chase him around the backfield and bring him down for a loss. Every interior lineman for the Tigers was on the play. Gatlin Hancock was in there. Gus Gamage, Powell, others. Logan Floyd was a part of that. Logan Floyd. And it looks like uh, both teams are going to be satisfied for it to run its way out. 13, 12, 11, 10. It's going to, I think that's going to be it. You are right. So that's going to be the end of our first half. Darlington's going to lead it going into the locker room. 28 to 7 is your score at halftime. Again, we're glad you're with us tonight on WLAQ and the live Darlington School video stream. We are going to go ahead and take a four minute break. When we come back, we'll give you some scores from around the area. We'll talk about this game. We may touch on some college matchups that are coming up that you're excited about tomorrow, Rick. I know you're looking forward to watching some games. Absolutely. Tomorrow. And so we'll do a bunch of stuff coming up with our halftime show. But again, you're listening to Darlington Football on WLAQ and watch or watching the live video stream. Darlington up 28 to 7 at halftime. We'll be back in four minutes. And right here in our. They are super knowledgeable about the market in Rome, whether it's home buying, rental homes. They have their finger on the pulse of what's going on. We both sold a house and bought a house, and the transition from both went really smoothly for us. I feel like they've become almost a part of our family, so we're just really appreciative of Hardy and what they've done for us. All their team uh, put together from maintenance to management to sales 
I, I can't really say enough about them. I'd highly recommend them to anybody coming to town or living in Rome looking for uh, investment properties or homes to buy. I'd like to wish the Darlington football team a great season. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. My name is Ryan Sarville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. At Darlington, we find our confidence in discovering who we are. In the classroom and on stage. The opportunities are endless. Our creativity knows no bounds as we take risks, explore opportunities, and stretch our minds. Together with our teachers, we use what we've learned to create beauty, to tell stories, to inspire. We discover new passions while allowing existing ones to flourish. We know that we can do anything, be anything, achieve anything. We give our time to something greater than ourselves. Whether we're sketching, singing, writing, or acting, we find new ways to express ourselves and share our talents with the world. We know that our ideas and contributions matter, and we take great pride in that. Because today, because today, because today, because today, because today, tomorrow, forever. We're Darlington Tigers. We welcome you back in to the Little Big Horn. That's their stadium here at Chattooga County High School. Buddy Wendell Field, Matt Davis, and with me tonight, Rick Lundy. 28-7, Darlington Tigers lead it here at halftime, Rick. And I was looking back at my scoring summary here. And in the pregame, we were talking about how last week against Coosa, you would have five Darlington Tigers score touchdowns in the first half. Today, it's four. You had Joel Lowenberg, who scored the first touchdown to put the Tigers up 7-0. Zero. The second touchdown of the night for the Tigers was Demarion Floyd on a two-yard run. Then you would have a pass to Bowden Owens for a touchdown and a pass to Tommy Bethel for a touchdown. So four Tigers into the end zone here today for uh, uh, for the Darlington Tigers in this first half. That's pretty unbelievable. And that's what it's like. That's what the Darlington Tigers do. They have so many facets of the game that they can strike on its – impossible no disrespect meant for the indians to key on one or two players for the tigers and it looks like the chattooga indians marching band is going to play some selections from the band chicago tonight i, I like chicago they got a few songs i really really dig seen them in concert several times uh excellent excellent uh music from chicago so we're going to enjoy that performance but we're going to go ahead and 
look at some other scores from other area games taking place tonight. Of course, now we're really into region play. So here in a couple of weeks, we'll start to see the playoff picture begin to shake out. It's hard to believe that we're already getting to that point of the season. But right now, the model Blue Devils in AA play in Fannin County. That's out at Woodard Tuggle out in Shannon today. They are up 7-0 to at halftime over the uh, Fannin County Rebels, a team they've really struggled against the last couple of years. Of course, everybody, uh, you know, playing against Fannin County in 7AA the last couple of years has struggled against that team. Rotmart over Harrelson County really having their way 35-0 at half of that football game. Almerchi struggling against Pepperell. That game is a 21-0 game at halftime with the Dragons in the lead. Of course, the Darlington Tigers will host the Pepperell Dragons coming up next week. And uh, let's see, we've got Bremen over Lafayette, 27 to zero. You've got Central Lions up over Sonorville, 21 to seven. That's a halftime score here at the Little Big Horn. Darlington leads to 28 to seven at half. It's North Murray having their way with Gordon Central, 35 to zero. Uh, Rome is really hitting their stride right now. They're up over the Sequoia Chiefs. It's Rome's homecoming tonight. They're having a lot of fun over there at Barron Stadium, 31 to zero halftime score. Calhoun, who defeated Cartersville in what some a lot would consider an upset last week in an overtime game. They are up over Hiram, but I would expect them to be up a little bit more than they are at this point. It's a 14 to 10 game in favor of the Yellow Jackets. You've got uh, Ringgold over Cahulla Creek, 14 to seven. And then the Cedartown Bulldogs, Rick. They're playing an undefeated Heritage Generals, and they are dominating, 42 to zero. 42 right to now. nothing. My brother's doing the color commentary on the sidelines. Shout out to your big brother-in-law partner for 35 years, Bill Lundy. And uh, 42 to nothing, just like you said. And Bill just texted me and said it's 42 to nothing. And Matt, he commented very favorably on your commentary on your predictions and said you were right on it for what, how Cedartown should execute against the Generals. Because we've seen the Darlington Tigers beat the Generals. And that's something I want to say about the Darlington Tigers. We have beaten Northwest Whitfield. That's a quad A public school. We have beaten the uh, Heritage Generals in the past. Quad A region game for the Cedartown Bulldogs. The Darlington Tigers come to play no matter what level of play we're on. And we normally play up outside of our region games. And I got to tell you, Rick, I was just thinking about this as you were talking about that. Obviously, right now, Cedartown, as you pointed out there, ranked number one in the state in their classification this year. You got Darlington ranked number eight in the state. You got Rotmart in the top ten, Calhoun in the top ten, Cartersville in the top ten, uh, Rome in the top ten. Uh, I'm trying – I know I'm leaving somebody Carrollton. out. Carrollton. I mean, Northwest Georgia football is just rocking and it's rolling. It's a hotbed. Whatever region you're in for superb football talent, coaches – uh, administration at these high schools and the extracurricular activities and everyone knows a student athlete is and a student uh, athlete that includes instrumentation playing in the band uh, cheerleading whatever and uh, the broad spectrum anyone involved in that kind of extracurricular activity is a better student and they're more real rounded and they're happier so, I mean, Northwest Georgia athletics and extracurricular activities are exemplary, and I'm really proud of all our schools. So it makes it a heck of a lot of fun as a it fan to, to, to follow these teams, no doubt about it. Well, speaking of having fun, we're enjoying this presentation from the Chattooga Indians Marching Band here at halftime, doing selections from the band Chicago. Uh, wish you were here with us, but since you can't be tonight, we're glad to have you along on the radio and also the live video stream. We're going to take another break, and then we come back. We'll recap the first half and start to set the stage for the second half, but we are at the Little Bighorn. We're in Chattooga County, Somerville, Georgia. It's the Darling Tigers and the Chattooga Indians in a big Region 7A Division 1 showdown. But right now, the Darlington Tigers are on top, 28-7. to We're going to send it back to the studio for a break. We're glad you're with us. We'll be back in four minutes. Here, I am becoming who I want to be. Here, I am looking toward my future. Here, we learn from our failures so that we may soon succeed. Here, we're passionate about learning and trying new things every day. Here, 
We search for new perspectives and cultures so we can better understand the world. Because at Darlington, we know we're in the most trusted hands. As we discover new passions and learn more about ourselves through academics, athletics, fine arts, and service to our community, we show our versatility as we choose different pathways to our goals. This is our home. We embrace challenges and persevere, even when something seems impossible. We collaborate and create to take our place in the world. We know that together we can make an impact. This is our moment, our time. Graduates today, Darlington forever. They are super knowledgeable about the market in Rome, whether it's home buying, rental homes. They have their finger on the pulse of what's going on. We both sold a house and bought a house, and the transition from both went really smoothly for us. I feel like they've become almost a part of our family. So we're just really appreciative of Hardy and what they've done for us. All their team uh, put together from maintenance to management to sales. Uh, I can't really say enough about them. I'd highly recommend them to anybody coming to town or living in Rome looking for uh, investment properties or homes to buy. I'd like to wish the Darlington football team a great season. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. My name is Ryan Somerville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. Here from the Little Bighorn in Chattooga and Chattooga High School, Darlington up 28 to 7 at halftime. We'll recap the scoring drives here as we get ready to continue our halftime show. Do want to remind you about the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game awarded at the end of each night. Looking forward to that. Also, the Room Orthopedic Center high school football scoreboard show coming up after tonight's action with Lynn Butler and Austin Butler. And I know that Austin was a little bit under the weather last week, so I hope he's feeling much better. Better getting ready to crank up some scores for you in a little bit with his father, Lynn. They do a great job of that show, and we appreciate them uh, continuing the tradition of having that show on WLAQ. Now, as far as the scoring went there in the first half, the Chattooga Indians would start out with the ball after Darlington won the toss, deferred to the second half. They would go three and out in their first drive on the first drive of the game for the Darlington Tigers that started out at the 48-yard line of the Indians. It would end with a touchdown run from Joel Lowenberg to go up 7-0 to with eight 
8-18 left to go in the first quarter. Then on the ensuing drive, Chatuga put together a nice drive. Zayden Perry would cap it off with a 15-yard run to tie the ball game up at seven apiece with just under six minutes to play in the first quarter. Darlington would go three and out. Chatuga would go three and out. Then on Darlington's third drive of the football game, they would score on a two-yard run from Demarion Floyd to go up 14-7. That was with 9.45 remaining in the second quarter. Chatuga had the ball. An interception by Jack Good with 7.34 left to go in the half would set the Darlington Tigers up for a pass play to Bowden Owens shortly thereafter, and they would score to go up 21-7 with 3.48 remaining in the half. Chatuga would punt on the ensuing drive, and then on Darlington's last drive of the first half, which started with 125 left to go in the half from the Chattooga 47-yard line. It was a 35-yard pass play to Tommy Bethel with 40.1 seconds left to go in the half that put Darlington up Darlington up 28-7, to and that was pretty much it for the first half, Rick. Good half for the Darlington Tigers, kind of slow developing in the beginning, kind of going back and forth there at the beginning of the game, but then you really started to see the Darlington Tigers late in that first half take control of the half. It's like we made adjustments each time that we would uh, get the ball back and we started putting things together, tightening the seams. And that last drive when Jack Good threw the touchdown pass to Bethel, Jack, Jack was in the backfield alone going through his progressions for his receivers. And he could have picked the open receiver on that play. I don't. Brent Bell dialed up an excellent play for seam route running and he hit Bethel for the score. Well, Rick, we've got about three minutes and 45 seconds left of the halftime period. Then we'll have the three-minute mandatory warm-up period before we actually resume with football in the second half. So uh, what college games are you looking most forward to checking out tomorrow? Well, I think uh, Tennessee and LSU is going to be a good one, and I agree with you that uh, in our drive up that – uh, Tennessee better be ready for LSU because I think LSU is ready to uh, beat uh, the Vols if the Vols aren't playing their best contest. And if they do, Rick, there's no doubt that Brian Kelly and his family are going to be very proud of that uh, victory. Transferring uh, the head coach from Notre Dame to LSU, there's no doubt about that. You also have interest in, I guess, the southwestern United States, Texas Christian as a 17th rank. They play 19th rank Kansas Jayhawks. And isn't the head coach there the former Mad Hatter at LSU, or is he gone? Not any longer. It's Not a any different longer. coach now. And TCU last week picked up a whopping victory over Oklahoma. They sure and did. now they've they got sure themselves did. into at least the conversation people are talking about them in terms of the playoffs. We'll see if that actually ends up transpiring as the season goes along. But that's an interesting matchup. And who would have thought that at the beginning of the year? Absolutely. Arkansas is going to want to get back in the win column against Mississippi State. And Mississippi State, while 23 ranked, uh, their coach uh, is is an excellent aerial offensive mind, and he'll just throw the ball every down. You know, and it's funny. I haven't had a chance to check this out, but evidently on a, in a press conference or a television interview or something like that, the headline was this, and I was getting ready to drive up here when I saw it, but it said, Mike Leach makes comments, and they're even strange for him. And I'm like, oh, I've got to see this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it's strange for him and that's what they're saying, I can only imagine what kind of outlandish thing he said. Exactly. Since Cincinnati was in the BCS conference, conversation uh, last year and uh, dented that top four uh, uh, level to uh, bring some eliteness to that level of D1. They're ranked 24th and they play South Florida. But you've got to be ready to play South Florida because all those teams in the state of Florida have good athletes. Oh, no doubt about it. And then I noticed next on your list is the oldest rivalry in the Deep South. It is. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Auburn Tigers. Well, all Auburn uh, was ahead of LSU 17 to nothing on the Plains and then let it slip through their fingers to a 21-17 loss. And uh, Auburn is uh, cobbling together a bunch of fighters and tough players that are getting, uh, I think, more and more fused together. But who can go into Athens and, and play the Georgia Bulldogs this year. Oh, that's a very, very yeah. good point. That's going to be an interesting game. Uh, to that keep could get ugly on. quick, or we could see 
uh, a fight between a tiger and a bulldog. No doubt. Well, man, we've got about 30 seconds left of halftime. Then the, well, are we in the warm-up period already? I think we already are. So we're going to keep it right here. But we're glad you're with us tonight on WLK. Any, any other interesting games? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, Texas A&M and uh, the University of Alabama Crimson Tide are the 8 o'clock marquee game. And I don't think from the off-season comments about the NIL and <laughs> uh, acquiring athletes, we'll put it in a nice way, uh, that both coaches fired at each other that there's going to be any love lost uh, at Tuscaloosa. And I think the honeymoon for Jimbo over there at Texas A&M is over it before is. it hardly got an opportunity to begin because it, I hear yeah. rumblings. They're figuring out how they can get rid of him already. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, the uh, – the previous coach had recruited well and was building that program well. So one could say where uh, Harson doesn't have his recruited players yet on his roster that maybe uh, uh, Jimbo won with the previous head coach's recruited talent. And now he's getting enough years in there that – I thought he had a good recruiting class. I mean, somebody said he had the best uh, players that money could buy, so I don't know. Who <laughs> well, was that that said that? <laughs> well, I will tell you this, though. But what a concept when you can be in a position, obviously a tremendous amount of pressure, but if you get fired, you get multi-millions of dollars. It's amazing. Exactly. It's like when uh, Coach O was fired from LSU a couple of seasons or a season ago. Uh, he made the comments in an interview not too long ago that he basically Basically, just said, "Okay, uh, what time do you want me to leave, and which door do you want me to leave out of?" Exactly. That's like, thanks. And uh, when are you going to write the checks? Is it Coach yeah. Collins that recently is uh, uh, exited at yeah. Georgia Tech? Yeah, and, uh, and the athletic that buyout I think is between eight and eleven million. Amazing. It's going to be interesting to follow who they end up going with. I know the big talk for Georgia Tech folks is hoping that they get Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, to come to the flats. Um, and that would be great, but there have to be some other things that fall into place with a hire like that for him to be successful. And one of them is going to be taking advantage of the name, image, and likeness situation that you were referring to yes. earlier. And maybe, you know, whenever you talk about Georgia Tech and recruiting and things of that nature, the academic standards. Always. You know, so that plays a factor as well. So I'm not sure if he is the best fit for Georgia Tech, although as a Georgia Tech fan, I'd love to see him give it a shot. I know we have an offensive and defensive lineman that's all state for the second year in a row that is a 4.0 and wants to be an engineer, Gus Gamage. Whoever's listening that has influence at Georgia Tech, they're crazy not to sign him, aren't they, Matt? I agree, and I'd love to see him playing down there Absolutely. at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Grant Field. We'll but, all get season tickets. No, indeed. Well, we've got about a minute left until we begin our second half. Just to kind of recap, again, the Darlington Tigers up 28-7. to They would win the toss before the game, deferred to the second half. So with a 28-7 to lead, they are going to get the football to start this second half. And that really could, if the Tigers can come out and put together a drive to start this second half, it could really set the tone for how the rest of this game goes. No doubt about it. If they begin the second half the way they ended the first, first and go up 35-7, you're going to see uh, even more regular passing and stretching the ball downfield by uh, the senior quarterback for the Chattooga Indians. And, you know, he wasn't even on the players to watch list in the pregame scout. He had been hurt. So we really didn't – we're really seeing him for the first time from maybe any lack of prior film to see him play. To Marion Floyd and Talon Shirey in the backfield to try to return this kick here from the Chattooga Indians as it is teed up for Hunter Brown, the place kicker here for the Chattooga Indians as we get ready for him to trot to the ball. Actually, it's going to be Juan Roque, I should say, who will tee it up and kick it off. Yeah, he's the captain for the Indians tonight, number 72. And uh, 
He's a senior. It's going to be brought out by Talon Shirey. Fielded and brought up to the middle of the field. He gets a good block. He is going to be across midfield <laughs> on the run down the sidelines on the He's far gone. side. He's at the 20, 15, 10, 5, gone. A kick return for a touchdown. Do you see a flag on the field? Uh, I don't see no one. No laundry. No in laundry in the Tiger strike quicker than you and I even predicted as we open up the second half. That's a man that may have cake on his mind. You are kidding <laughs> my goodness the extra point the snap to kick the hold we take for granted and it's always done just with perfection uh this will be uh no different situation uh rylan scott will come in and kick the extra point and uh, we're about to go up with only 16 seconds elapsed in the third quarter from the uh opening kickoff return for a touchdown and I was trying to pick up where he fielded that, but we mentioned to you at the beginning of the game we're kind of at an angle, and I couldn't tell where he was. So if anybody's watching the video and they could pick up where he fielded that, let us know. The kick is on the way, and it is through the uprights, and it's 35-7 to 7 just like that. It didn't seem to be any shallower, you could say, I guess, than the 35. It could have been between the 28 and the 30, 32-yard line. So we're going to call it, what, about a 68-yard kick return for a touchdown? I think that's at least otherwise. that. And Talon Showery, once again, he picks his quarters, and he has an acceleration. And when he puts the hammer down, you can wave by. 35-7, <laughs> to 7, just like that. That is how we open up the second half. And we talked about with Darlington, if they could get a quick strike here to begin the second half and go up 35-7, to seven, could really set the tone. So it's going to be really interesting, Rick, to see how Chattooga, now with their backs up against the wall, down by this much, how they respond. We mentioned that they've got a lot of freshmen and sophomore here on this team, how they handle a situation like this. Well, I would say that the coach says that, you know, they've got to deal with adversity, uh, stay healthy, and they got to play through these adverse moments. And this is a ball game that has plenty of time left. And they've got to realize their successes one offensive series at a time. Ball will be kicked away from the 40. Ryland Scott trots up to it. Kicks it over into the corner to about the 34-yard line. He's upended, and he'll have it at about the 34-yard line. And the return man there for Chattooga was Landon Willingham. And Demarion Floyd, I mean, it's Iron Man football, folks. Uh, one of our star running backs goes down and makes the big hit. And I got to tell you, watching this Chattooga team play tonight, I've been impressed. I'm really surprised that this is a one-in-five team. I actually, I am too. I, you wonder, uh, is uh, – uh, Events happen. Have there been events happening with Gross being back starting tonight that has made them a better team? It apparently seems clear to me that you know that's the case. Uh, he's going to get rid of this ball quick, and I expect they're going to throw almost every down. Shotgun formation going to have a two wide set. There's a snap. They're going to run it. Try to go up the middle. There's nothing there. A oh, loss. loss of five to seven, and. Uh, that's that's tough sledding, guys, uh, for the Indians. Uh, our interior line, uh, Gamage and Powell and Hancock and others are just absolutely imposing their will on the offensive line of the Indians and shoving them backwards into the ball carrier. And I understand on the radio feed tonight, from time to time, we're getting some buzzing. And it, we have a lot of electronics around us, so I really can't pinpoint where that might be coming from. So we apologize that inconvenience. There's the snap. Gross turns, puts it in the air on second down a little bit. Wobbly, it's intercepted. Eli Thompson gets under it and picks it off. It looks like there was some miscue with the receiver not breaking it off, turning around. He went deep. Well, and did they... I think they're saying it was just an incomplete pass maybe oh, didn't quite goodness. Get under it. I was for sure he picked uh, that we off. had a good view he had hands and forearms under it I'm not seeing that one as an incomplete or an unmade uh, interception they're looking like they're going to talk about it obviously you don't have instant replay in GHSA football so there's no look they'll get at it but the officials are going to have a conference about it but I really felt like he got under that Rick 
Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, he seemed to cradle it well and scoop under it, and there wasn't any reaction. The purity of his reaction was jumping up joyfully that, hey, we intercepted it to get off the field or to bring the offense on. And then a late whistle seemed to be that they're revisiting it, and all the referees are on the middle of the Indian. It's a catch. Yep, it's an interception. I was sure of it. Yeah, yeah. And they have... Well, good for their deliberation. Interception. Yep. Yeah. So the second interception of the night for the Tigers, first one was from Jack Good, and the second one from Eli Thompson. So things are going completely in Darlington's favor in this football game to start the second half. Darlington has an opportunity now to run their first set of offensive downs to uh, half the field and to take it down in uh, – probably take the hearts out of the Indians in the game, but uh, you know that I wouldn't be surprised if the Chattooga Indians kept fighting, but we'll go up 42-7 if we score here. First and 10 from the 48 ball oh, comes out. It is picked up by Settlemeyer. He's running down to the 30. He's got it inside the 20. Stays up, cuts back inside. He's going to be inside the 10 after picking up the fumble from the Tigers, so they turn it over on the very next play. Yeah, I did. Uh, the uh, Chattooga Indians blew up the uh, right-sided uh, wide running play and just disturbed everything and stripped the ball. They stripped the ball. So a little bit of number daylight. one, Billy Settlemeyer made the made the scoop up and run. So 10:45 left to go here in the third quarter as Chattooga gets ready to line up with first and goal from the Darlington nine. That is a big turn of events. Exactly what we didn't need to do and I did not expect to happen. Yeah, the Darlington Tigers do not turn the football Never the very often. Well, it's up to the defense to keep this a uh, only a seven-point score, a single score for the Indians. Gross has got Zayden Cook in the backfield with him, going to send two wide on each side of the formation here for first and goal from the nine. Gross ready to take the snap. Darlington Tigers defense in pursuit. Ball in the air, batted down, getting a hand up and knocking it down for the Tigers was going to be number three, Highland Thomas, making a big play there. Yeah, Highland Thomas got up high and uh, blocked the pass from Gross. And they're, they're in a spread. They're in a spread, Matt. Indeed they are. So Gross is going to line them up for second down and goal from the nine-yard line. 10.41 left to go here in the third quarter. Darlington leading at 35-7. to seven. Chattooga getting ready to snap the ball. A man goes in motion. That's Corey Gibson. We got a flag coming in. I think this is going to be on the offense. Another procedural penalty, a false start. Of they've had a few in the game. And that one stings. It does. It does. Uh, it's just unforced errors. Darlings has had virtually none. And is that maybe six uh, false starts uh, in the game thus far against the Indians? Zayden Cook in the backfield with Brady Gross, the quarterback. It's going to be second down and goal now from the 14 after the five-yard penalty on the procedural penalty so gross is ready to take the snap ball in his hands he'll drop back put it in the air and that's going to be incomplete we had excellent uh pressure on uh, the senior quarterback and excellent coverage uh, I, once again though like you said a few minutes ago uh matt i can't believe this team had 54 points scored on it by our it is a shocker to me because this is, like I say, a pretty talented-looking football team. They've got some decent size up front. They've got good skill players, some speed, good quarterback. Uh, but, again, a young team, a lot of freshmen and sophomore, yeah. you know, playing on this football team tonight. They do have a senior quarterback, and it shows um, he's a good, really good player. But in a couple of years, this team really could put something together. Here's the – Waiting on the snap to Gross. He drops back. He's going to put it in the air. Connects with Corey Gibson. He is greeted unkindly by Eli Thompson. Ball, ball comes out. And the Darlington Tigers have recovered. They've Absolutely. got the ball back. Uh, and, uh, stripped by uh, Eli Thompson and recovered. Who, who got the recovery? Ta uh, McKay Rush came out with the ball, I believe. Okay. All right. 
Thompson made contact, held him up, and stripped the uh, ball from uh, the receiver, and Rush made the play. And that's the thing. Uh, Darlington Tigers keep pursuing to the echo of the whistle. So the Tigers get the ball back. This has been a wild it third has. quarter, hasn't it? It has. We've had a kickoff return for a touchdown. We've had a fumble that was nearly returned for a touchdown. And now we have another fumble going back the other way for the Tigers. So the Tigers are going to start at their own 29-yard line, first and 10, leading at 35-7. to seven. Going to send three wide receivers to the near side, one on the far side, working from left to right. As Good gets ready to take the snap, he's got it in his hands. He's going to turn, hand it off. A little bit of a seam there for Bowden Owens. He'll dive through it and get about four or five yards. It looked like he was wanting more there. Yeah, yeah, he's punching the air a little bit. He's going to go back and say, give it to me again. But that's what you want out of your running backs. They want opportunities to run. And behind this excellent line of scrimmage blocking, who wouldn't? Indeed. So that brings up second down and six here for the Tigers. Ball on the 32-yard line, 33. The Marion Floyd in the backfield with Jack Good for this package. Going to send two wide to the far side, one on the near. And here's Good going to turn, hand it off to Floyd. Runs it off to the left. He's gone. off to the races. He's across midfield. He 40, is. the 30, Look 25. Can they catch him? <laughs> no, sir. They 10, cannot. 5, gone. Touchdown. Darlington Tigers score again. And this time, it's a 68-yard run to pay dirt for Demarion Floyd. If you wondered which, which of the many Indians chasing him was going to get him, but he just he hits that gear that we know he has, and he's gone. D-man Floyd with a big play, and the Tigers strike again here in the third quarter, 41-7. to They'll try to tack on the extra with Ryland Scott here in just a couple of moments. I mean, there were five Indians running a, a beside him and just behind him and along with him, and they couldn't touch him. My goodness. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Dude's electric. Here comes the snap, the hole from Koncheski. Kick is going to be blocked. And the score remains 41-7. to seven. So 41-7, to seven, uh, the law of averages alone will get Ryland Scott because he's perfecto. He was 5-for-5 five five last week in a 22-yard field goal in addition to that. Eight points accounted for by our kicker. So uh, Ryland Scott will come out or one of the other Tigers and kick it off to uh, the Indians. And we have a 41-7 to seven lead with 9.33 remaining in the third. When do they determine to run? have a running clock? Say that again. I'm when sorry, do they determine to have a running clock? Uh, 30 points, I believe. Okay. And when the fourth quarter, I think it's decided by the officials. But when you're in the third quarter, obviously, I think the coaches have yeah. to agree to it, unless I'm badly mistaken. Well, absent other scores by the Indians, I would think we may have a running clock at least in the fourth quarter. I just got a text message from Scotty Hancock, dad, of course, of uh, Gatlin Hancock, and he pointed something out that I definitely would agree with. He says the O-line deserves a cake. Look how many people we have scoring, and Jack has all day yeah. to throw the ball. No, he's exactly point. right. Yeah. Jack is alone back there going through his progression of receivers to pick who he's going to throw it to. The offensive line may need – uh, five forks. The kick is going to be fielded at about the four-yard line and brought out by Chatuga, and they've got some running room. He's across the 35, down to the 40, and they finally bring him down. That was number two, Colton Sanford. And number 22, Tommy Bethel puts the big hit on Sanford after a, a very good, solid return out to about the 40-yard line. So again, the Tigers up 41 to seven with 9.23 left to go in the third quarter. You know, I don't know that Gross has been sacked tonight, has he? The Indians quarterback? He's had pressure, he's been knocked down, but I don't know that anyone's gotten a sack. Uh, consistent with the text you just got, the same O-lines are same D-line, <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, they've been a terror to rush the quarterback. And one more point I'll make about that in just a couple of minutes based on what you were just talking about. There's the snap. Gross is going to hand it off, and a host of Tigers is there yeah. to plug the running lane and bring him down. 
they're so well conditioned. That's one of the things that Coach Athos talked about a lot Absolutely. in our pregame interviews is is the conditioning and that they put in for this team, which they always do. But these guys are in shape. They last throughout the game. Absolutely. We're not going to be out conditioned. Iron Tiger and uh, the uh, weightlifting and running program, it's storied at uh, Darlington in what uh, Coach Atha has done in 21 years after learning from the tutelage of Coach Jerry Sharp before him is just we're not going to be uh, tired in the fourth quarter. We're not going to be out conditioned. So Gross gets ready to take the snap on second and nine. He'll turn and hand it off, and getting in there is, I believe, Jack Cowan got him wrapped up initially. He did. He wrapped him up, spun him around, and it seems like we also had number 67 for the Tigers in on the stop, Connor Ellison. Zayden Cook, Cook was the ball carrier on that play. That brings up third and seven here for the Chattooga Indians. As Gross gets ready to take the snap from ball on the 42-yard line. Perry in the backfield with him flanked to his right. Going to have four wide receivers as Darlington tries to get a stop and get off the field here on third down, leading at 41-7. to seven. Here's the snap to Gross. Drops back into the pocket. Puts a lot of air underneath this one. He's open. He's got him. He catches it, and he's going to trot right into the end zone. A strike to Trey Smith and a touchdown, a wide open Trey Smith. And a big play for the Chattooga Indians. We had two uh, defensive backs a stride and a half behind him. Relatively good uh, coverage. But once again, senior quarterback Gross just dropped it in the bucket. He really did. And as you mentioned a lot, credit where credit's due. I mean, Darlington really jumps out big here in this third quarter. But Chattooga just keeps plugging away and trying to climb back in the game. And when you do that, you keep playing, you keep trying to get better, you know, good things happen for you eventually. You play your best, successful things can happen. Uh, number 72, the senior uh, captain is going to kick the extra point for the Indians. Roque kicks it, and it is through the uprights and good. So the score moves to 41-14 to here at Chattooga High School. And uh, – the thing that Sean Peake is doing here is putting together uh, a program with what he even says in the V3 magazine that uh, publisher Ian Griffin does so well is he's got 80% freshmen and sophomore right now. And he's got uh, just enough seniors to have senior leadership out there from Roku and from others. Uh, gross, the quarterback, but this, this Chattooga Indian team is young and they may be so young that they just have stopped looking at the scoreboard and are just going to try to just play the best football they can play. Roque is going to tee it up again here for Chattooga and kick it back to the Darlington Tigers as the official trots off the field. He scooted. Okay, uh, Roku's is he doing the kicking chores? I think he is. Yeah, Roque. Roque. Okay. It's going to be end over end. Roku is what you watch your ESPN Plus app with. <laughs> tomorrow, run, tomorrow. Run. I'm already thinking ahead. Talon Shari with a return across yeah. midfield. He returned the last one for a touchdown to open up this, open up the uh, second half. And we're going to be playing once again on uh, the Indian side of the field. Uh, the uh, field position, we've won that, uh, that battle uh, the entire game. You're just thinking about that road coup. You're like, now how do I work that road coup thing I am. Again? Well, I, as long as it gets worked, I don't. <laughs> doesn't matter to me who gets the credit as long as they get to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So Darlington will get the ball at the Chattooga 45-yard line. So good field position. They'll line up with first and 10, 732 left to go here in the third Do we quarter. have a new quarterback? Um, or is it still Jack? I can't see the number. Still Jack. Jack's going to drop back, looking to throw, puts it in the air. There it and is. Open break. Beautiful. Bell, stretches those arms, Brady hauls Bell. it in. Touchdown, <laughs> Darlington Tigers. 45-yard strike right in the bread basket to Braden Bell. What a beautiful throw from Jack Good and a great catch from Braden Bell to finish up the play. Isn't it great when it happens exactly the way it was designed? Uh, the pocketed blocking, he takes his time, he drops it in the bucket for the receiver. And how about Bell not missing stride in reaching out and catching it with his hands. My oh my, 
27 to 14, Darlington on top. They've scored more points than they have this season. And I guess the team that's been more competitive than the scoreboard would reflect a good portion of the game. They've battled. There's the, the Indians kick. have. It is through the uprights this time, and that is going to move the score to 48 to 14. And you were talking about this earlier. Uh, the previous extra point was blocked on the previous score from Darlington, and Ryland just moves on to the next one. And that's what you got to do if you're a kicker, and uh, you just knew that was going to be right down the middle. It, you have amnesia to the previous kick, and you go out, and it was high, arched, and right down the middle. As Coach Atha calls him, a true technician. Absolutely. I, you know, the little things stay small because he's always, as a technician, paying close attention to them. And I've been saying, uh, when I had the privilege of announcing some games with you last year, Matt, uh, Rylan Scott can kick on Saturdays somewhere. I am in 100% agreement with you on that, Rick. So the Tigers will kick it back here to the Chattooga Indians. And this is turning into a pretty long third quarter. We were rocking and rolling in that first half, but there have been a lot of scoring. And Well, you have effortful play and uh, never say die and don't give up coming from the Chattooga Indians. And rightly uh, so, the uh, Darlington Tigers are rising to the situa situation and conquering all facets of the game over the Indians, but the Indians are not giving up. Tommy Bethel to kick it away, and this one's going to be sailing right into the back of the end zone. Man, put some good leg on that one. That'll be a touchback. You know, the coaches for Darlington have everything prepared for this team from the first day that they start moving on from last week's game to this game. And uh, one of the wild cards in this game, giving credit where credit's due, has been Gross, the quarterback, as a senior 6'6", 200-pound quarterback, to try to find something positive that they could do. And he had that long touchdown strike. I'm sure they're going to throw again. First and 10 from the 20 and tries to throw a little screen that's going to be incomplete. Quarterback took a pretty heavy hit there. Yeah, he took a heavy hit for number four, Joel Lowenberg, who none of us would want to be greeted by as aggressively and within the rules of the game that Joel plays it. And, uh, you know, the quarterback's bending and moving and rubbing. <laughs> He's, he was hit pretty hard. And I'm over here pondering, you know, Scotty, I think he had a great suggestion. So uh, maybe WLAQ can go in with Honeymoon Bakery for this award tonight. But do you think, Coach Atha, how do you think he would react if I showed up to do our interview this week and brought a cake and handed it to him and said, hey, we need to give this to the offensive and defensive line? You need to feed the <laughs> feed, feed the beast. Boys. Yeah. There's the snap. They're going to hand wow. it off. And he has dropped immediately and aggressively by a Darlington Tiger. I'm trying to catch his number. Was it Owen, Lowenberg or was that Eli? I think, I it, think was it was Lowenberg. Yeah. It was Lowenberg again. And uh, Gus Gamage had to put on the bus brakes because Lowenberg <laughs> dropped him. But Gus was right behind him. The bus brakes. <laughs> Ball at the 17-yard line. That brings up third down and 12 here for Gross and the Chattooga Indians. So they got to come up with a big one here to try to keep this drive going with 642 left to go in the third quarter. It's going to be a three wide receiver set. Here's the snap to Gross. He'll drop back, puts it in the air, and that one's going to be out of bounds, incomplete. Uh, it may be because he's just back from injury, I think you had indicated, Matt. It seems like some of the receivers on their uh, area routes aren't breaking off where he wants them, and the ball's landing in a place that he had, he threw it to, but the receiver is not breaking off his route, running his route to that area. But we've had good coverage and a lot of pressure on him the whole time. So we get ready for Hunter Brown to punt the ball away for Chattooga after a three and out. One man back here for the Tigers. Going to be standing at the 45-yard line on Chattooga's side of the field to try to return this kick. And the kick is off and away. 
It's going to be a pretty high kick, drops in, and it'll be fielded at about midfield by Talon Chirey. And that's one of the most unheralded uh, efforts by a football player at any level uh, is the fair catch. He kept it from rolling probably another 20 yards, and now we have just half the field to go right on the uh, Chattooga Indian. Big C in the middle with the uh, Indian feather coming off of it. And we're going left to right as we're looking at the field, and we still have uh, predominantly, it looks like, all our starters in the game. And Sammy Koncheski is in at quarterback now. We do have. Okay, there is a change. Okay. The sophomore does a great job. Get some playing time here in this game. Played some in the game against Kusa last week. There's a snap. They're going to hand it off, go off to the left side. And that's going to be a loss there on that first down wow. play. My goodness. <laughs> A couple uh, of linemen for Darlington were about 20 yards down yeah, the field. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Cabbage took a guy literally 22 yards downfield. As well as Tra Truett yeah. Hayworth, big man Truett <laughs> Hayworth. Truett Hayworth was with him. <laughs> and uh, Truett, Tim it'll all be yours next year. You're a junior. <laughs> Timmy Smith was a ball carrier on yeah. that last play. Second and 11 after a one-yard loss. Here's the snap. Koncheski's going to hand it off. They're going to run it off to the left side. Get a little bit more on that play, about a four or five-yard gain there with a good push up front from that offensive line. Setting up a third down and long here for the Tigers. Well, it looks like we're seeing from both teams uh, uh, an uh, exchange of uh, uh, reserve players, maybe even one would call JV players or uh, – second team players to the starters and that's good and healthy to see it's 48 to 14 five minutes 14 seconds left in uh the third quarter and uh that's the way it should be you're good with words rick you're gonna have to come up with what we put on the cake there's a snap okay. slow snap picked up by sammy Koncheski. good heads up play for him he's gonna run it up the middle of the field he didn't get quite enough to get the first down but a good recovery after picking up the snap so that sets up a fourth down and we'll see the tigers punt it away he was about two yards shy of the line to gain sammy ran like he was a senior he's a sophomore <laughs> sophomore of course, his dad, Tony Koncheski, is the football coach out at Barry. Started that program. has been very successful. He grew up in a football family. Absolutely. As a coach's son myself and from a football family, there's nothing like it. Sammy has just uh, an, uh, a knowledge that is just unique. Here's the snap. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Timmy Smith breaks free. He's inside the 20, down to the 10, 5, and they bring him down. Did he get in? It's I think he's going to be shy at the one-yard line, but what a great run by Timmy Smith getting it down to the one-yard line. Do you think they hand him the rock again on this? I hope they do. they do. He went north and south and uh, looked like he was going in, and he carried the guy a couple of yards and was downed at the one-yard line. Excellent blocking once again by the offensive line. I think we're getting out some cake forks here, aren't we? I think we are, yeah. and that was a fourth-down conversion it on the was. run from Timmy Smith, and he got it all the way down to the one-yard line, setting up first and goal here for the Darlington Tigers to try to tack on some more points. We're under the four-minute mark here of the third quarter. Darlington leads at 48 to 14 coming to the game, averaging close to 37 points of game. They're going to be well over their average by the end of the night tonight. And the deliberate, uh, purposeful nature of how the offensive scheme has been uh, since the second quarter has been very dynamic for the Tigers. Sammy Koncheski turns and hands the ball off to Noah Duggan, and he's going to be dropped short a couple of yards of the goal line. We're seeing new faces uh, on, in, on offense for the Darlington Tigers and uh, not losing much in the way of uh, ex uh, experience or even talent level. It's just younger guys, but they're very willing, excellent condition, and will play their hearts out. And getting live snaps in a region game, yeah. and those are the types of things when you get those opportunities to take advantage of them, they pay dividends later on in and, these and, guys and coach Tommy Aith and the staff is excellent about uh, uh, putting on the field a uh, a full scale product that even the reserve guys can play and play second, well second in the game goal like from this. the three they're going to turn is. hand it off Duggan's got it and he drives it towards the goal line but he's I think close. he stood up short yeah okay he's close 
You know Timmy Smith wants another shot. I know. <laughs> He's looking over there. With, it, come on, call my number. <laughs> he is. He is. They all. They're hungry tigers. Picking 208, 207, left in the third. 48 14, Tigers well in control. We're knocking on the door to pass the uh, 50 point mark with another score. Coming up next week for the Darlington Tigers, I'll be back at Chris Hunter Stadium hosting the Pepperell Dragons. Looking forward to that one for sure. Sammy Koncheski lines them up, third and goal from the two. And I believe we got to delay a game. Yep. It's going to be on the Darlington Tigers. That'll back them up five yards. I'm sure if we don't convert here, there should be an opportunity for Ryland Thomas to come in and uh, kick field goal. And that's not running up the score, Matt. You and I know you mm -hmm. need to have those opportunities for your, uh, your kicker and your other players to play to the best of their ability. So through the reserve players for Darlington, if they score this touchdown, I mean, they want to get in there and do that. Noah Duggan's going to be in the backfield here with Sammy Koncheski here for this third down and play. Now from the seven after the penalty yards from the delay of game. Yes, sophomore Noah. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off to Noah, and he's going to be dragged down to the turf at about the seven. So that'll be no gain on the play, setting up fourth down. And let's see. I don't see him trotting Ryland Scott back out on the field just yet. So it looks like they'll... Run a play here. Yeah, they may just down. run a play. Yep. So Tigers lead at 48 to 14, 115 mark here of the third quarter. And it looks like they'll go 7 0. We have another quarter left of the game. But Darlington in full control here of this game now. Maybe he's going to run it down and pop a timeout. And then, no, it looks like yep. we're going to uh, run a play. Fourth and goal from the seven. Here comes the snap. Koncheski turns, hands it off to Duggan. He drags the pile, but he's going to be brought down at around the five, but great effort there, keeping those legs turning. Absolutely, and uh, there's uh, much wisdom and uh, uh, forethought in uh, Coach Atha's choice to uh, run the ball, keep it on the ground, run the clock, and Coach Atha is never one to uh, – uh, big Ike or run up a score on a coach, and that's what makes him, you know, in a class all his own, Matt. No doubt. Coach Atha in his 21st season as the head coach of the Darlington Tigers, and with a win tonight, he'll move his head coaching record to 175 wins. What a milestone. 175 wins. 175 of anything is excellent, but wins in high school football in Northwest Georgia, that's exemplary. Gross is going to line up under center. He'll turn, hand it off. They go to the right side, try to forget, try to get a running lane over on that right side. Found a little bit, but not a lot. Maybe a two or three yard game. <laughs> Second down and seven here for Chattooga. Started this drive at their own five, 24 seconds left here in the third quarter. It looks like we have seen the last play of the third quarter, Rick. Yeah, that's going to do it. I think we're going to tick it down and uh, you should have a running clock after the, uh, the end of this third quarter, shouldn't we? I believe so. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to let you know it's 48 to 14 in favor of Darlington as we get ready for the final quarter here from the Little Bighorn. We're going to send it back to the studio for a one minute timeout. We'll be back on WLAQ. Darlington Football would like to thank the following sponsors for their support of this year's live stream. Business Water Solutions, Kusa Steel, Hardy Realty, Riverside Auto Group, and Atrium Health Floyd. Thank you for your support. This broadcast is a production of Northwest Georgia Media. Thank you for watching.
with you out here at the Little Big Horn and Buddy Wendell Field right now Darlington on top 48 to 14 and as we start the fourth quarter Chattooga gets ready to snap the ball with second down and seven from their own seven this drive started out at their own five yard line after a turnover on downs from the Darlington Tigers on the previous drive under center is going to be Quarry Gibson in for Gross at quarterback. He is going to run it out to the near side, finds a little bit of room, cuts it inside, and picks up a decent chunk of yards there on that second down play. And with the angle and being screened by the Chattooga sidelines, I'm not sure where he got to, but we'll see here in just a couple of minutes. It looks like he gained. Uh, they're going to give him the line to gain successfully for a first down, and there was no – no, uh, nothing fancy. Student body right. He snapped it and bootlegged, boot, took a bootleg right. So the Indians will get lined up. Yeah. Thank you, huh. Well, they're calling it third down and one. So he did not get okay. it. Okay. Well, then they reset the sticks. Okay. Yep. So they're going to line up under center, it looks like, here for this next play. Again, Corey Gibson in at quarterback for Brady Gross. He'll take the snap, turns, is going to hand it off. They will run it towards up the middle and get the yard they needed, plus one. So they'll get the first down. And we've got new faces in on uh, defense. Cam Pettit, number 57 for the Tigers, was in on the stop, and he's in on defense. Uh, we have... Uh, Number 13, Aiden Davis, is in on defense for the Tigers. We're going to pick out other numbers. Number 33 for the Tigers, uh, Bryson Jones, is a freshman, and he's in uh, at defensive end. Uh, see some other numbers out there. Matt, number 15 uh, for the Tigers, uh, Jace Hatcher. Grace takes, Gross takes the snap. He's going to swing it out to the near side, and he'll be dropped after making the grab. So that brings up second down along here for the Indians after a pickup of about two yards on that pass play. And I got screened. I couldn't see who the receiver was that caught the ball. Number 67, Connor Ellison uh, is in for the Tigers uh, on the defensive line. Now the band over here at uh, Chattooga is playing the Rocky theme. I love yeah, it. I do. I do. Never <laughs> say die. You know, never say die. If I can change and you can change, anybody can change. <laughs> That's right. There's the snap. Here's a long pass yep. here from Gross in the air, and it's going to be incomplete. No flag on the play, an incomplete pass. Uh, Gross put it up for number four, Trey Smith, to have a shot at it. A senior wide receiver. Uh, excellent coverage by number 13, Aiden Davis, for the Tigers, an 11th grader. So Chattuga will line up. Ready for a third down and eight situation from their own 23-yard line with nine minutes and five seconds left to go in the football game. Darlington up 48 to 14. Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake. Players. Sounds like it. The game coming Feels up. Feels like it's it. been decided. I think if we don't make that decision, I'm going to have some problems. There is a screen it's pass screen. up the middle. Here Breaking he goes. it out is Corey Gibson. He's got a head full of steam and some speed. He's at the 40, the 30. He's down to the 20 inside the 15, and he's gone. Big no play. Flags. 70, 77 yards to pay dirt there for Corey Gibson. He's fast. He is. He is. He, he had another gear, and he was gone. Number 11, uh, Corey Gibson. Uh, he's a sophomore. Sophomore. That's right. So that's one of the many sophomores they have to look forward to becoming upperclassmen. And I mentioned to you earlier, a few of these kids are on the basketball team, recognizable names, and he's one of them. He is a really good player. So the score moves to 48 to 20 as we get ready for. Roque to try to tack on the extra point to make it a 48-21 football game with 8.36 left to go. Hold will be handled by Hunter Brown. And Juan Roque get ready for the kick, a senior. Kick on the way, and it is going to be through the uprights, and it's 48-21 to in favor of the Darlington Tigers as Chattooga with another touchdown. 
Well, you know, we didn't expect any different up here to Little Bighorn. You come in here and they're going to play their best and, you know, to fight against adversity. Uh, Sean Peake uh, said in his interview with Ian Griffin in the V3 magazine, and that's exactly what they're doing. The adversity is the will that has been imposed upon them by the Darlington Tigers to win the game. Darlington's clearly going to win the game, but uh, the Chattooga Indians is shaping and molding their young players in this game. You are not kidding, man. What 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 an interesting football game it's been. And, and like we've pointed out several times, and to your point, when you look at this Chattooga team, the youth is one of the main things that sticks out. But the fact that they're one and five, I, I'm still just in shock. Still at amazed that. at that. And I don't know what happened with the defense that they've uh, attempted with us at times, that they had, once again, 54 points scored on them by uh, the Murchie Indians. So Roque has got it teed up, ready to kick it back to the Tigers. It's going to be end over end, drops into the 35, fielded by Timmy Smith, and that's where the Tigers are going to set up shop for their next drive. We're going to see a lot of new faces out here. Number nine, Gray Fricks, uh, is on the field for the Darlington Tigers. Number eight, Jake Trebus is on the field for the Darlington Tigers. And you just, you got to feel so much, uh, so many positive things for these young men that are out on the field now because, you know, Monday through Thursday, they're right there with the top ranked Darlington Tigers, first offensive, first defense, helping prepare for this game. I'll tell you about a text I just got in just a second, but there's the snap to Sammy Koncheski. He's going to hand it off, gives it off to Miles Twyman, and Miles is going to be stopped close to the line of scrimmage. He might have... Uh, no, I think it's going to be no gain on the play, but the Model Blue Devils just got a text message from the voice of the Model Blue Devils football team, Jeff Gable. Uh, model beats Fannin County 24 to zero out at Woodard Tuggle. That's a big win for the Blue that Devils. That is a huge win. Uh, uh, Ninth grader, uh, Miles Schwiman on the carry. Tough running, tough sledding, and uh, he's uh, a tough runner that we're going to see a lot of good things in the future for the Darlington Tigers from Miles Schwiman. And when he was in high school, his daddy worked at WLAQ for a little while. He, Chris sure, did. he uh, sure did. Another run there for Miles. Picks up a few yards on that play. That's going to set up a third down here for the Tigers. They got to get, get about seven yards here to get a first down. Number 88, Boyd Rachels is in the game for the Darlington Tigers. Number 14, Trenton Moore is in the game for the Tigers. Miles Twyman's going to run off the field here for this down. Number 23 came in, Noah Duggan. Timmy Smith in the backfield with Koncheski here for third down and seven. Dropping back is Koncheski and trying to find somebody to throw it to. He's going to have to wow. tuck and run. He's going to be dropped by Parker Huff. Brace up fourth down. The defense by the uh, Chattooga Indians is still trying to make sparks fly, make things happen, try to get the ball back to maybe you know, get another score, do the things that they're trying to do is building blocks in this game. So Tommy Bethel on to punt the ball away here for the Darlington Tigers, Rick. Five sixteen and the clock ticking here in the fourth quarter with Darlington leading at 48 to 21. As we get ready for the snap to Tommy Bethel, ball in his hands, kick is on the way, and it is going to be dropping right in front of Corey Gibson and takes a bounce out of bounds inside the 20. Yeah, the uh, it took Tiger bounce. Uh, boy, uh, Tommy Bethel can do it all, can he? He is, man. Excellent punt, Tiger roll, and the Indies will have it first and 10. And... Uh, Let's see all the new faces we're getting uh, in on uh, defense for the Tigers. 
Brady Gross in at quarterback here for Chattooga. They played a few downs. We have Henry Ledbetter, a ninth grader, in on defense for the Tigers. Shotgun formation going to send a couple of wide to the far side, a couple to the near side here for the Indians, trailing 48-21 to 21 at home. Passes on the way to Gibson, get him out into space. Almost gets tripped up, shakes a tackle. He's going to be brought down after a pickup of about three or four yards. Looked like he had a little bit more, and then he started running the opposite direction before he got pulled down. Yeah, Henry Ledbetter kind of cornered him and uh, uh, got him down, just turned him and, and tackled him, roped him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lassoed him in. He did. He did. <laughs> he did. Second and five here for Chattooga with the ball at the 22-yard line of their side of the field, working from left to right. Three and a half minutes left, 48-21, Tigers, game in control, but everybody's getting to play, both benches, wouldn't you say, Matt? Oh, no doubt about it. Shotgun formation for this second down and six. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off, run it off the left side. That's Settlemeyer, and he is going to pick up first down yardage, and they bring him down. It took about five or six guys to bring him down. He's a big kid. Yeah, number one, uh, Billy uh, Settlemeyer has uh, played a big role in this game in the attempts to score and move the ball by the Indians, and they've never given up. He lost a shoe on that play. He'll come off he the field. He did. He's the one that scooped up the fumble and ran yeah. it in the third quarter, right? Uh, yep, yep, that is correct. Yeah. He probably put his foot in the ground so hard it probably just about buried it. It, uh, it did. Natural turf, those shoes will come off. Shotgun formation here for first and ten. They're going to hand it off and try to run it up the middle, find maybe a couple of yards. Of production on that play, setting up a second and eight. Two minutes and 15 seconds left of this football game. Darlington going to move to seven and zero on the season. More importantly, three and zero in region play. And just you know, we're taking on all comers. Next week's going to be the Pepperell Dragons at Chris Hunter Stadium. And if you're not there, Matt Davis is going to want to know why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. We're, and for a 7-0 Darlington Tiger team. Shotgun formation, second down and eight from the 39. Chattooga on their side of the field. They're going to swing it out to the far side. And he wow. got close to the first down. <laughs> we'll see where they mark him out of bounds. But I think they're moving the chains already. Big hit by Darlington player. I'm trying to see the number. Did you pick it up, Matt? I did not, man. I think they're. I think they, they got the change tangled up a little I bit think on this. They did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think but, you're just going to call but, it a first down. Yep. Yeah. So first and ten here for Chattooga with 111 left to go in the game, but Darlington's been in control of this one for a while. Shotgun formation, four wide set. There's the snap. Going to pull it down, hand it off. They go up the middle, and that'll be about a three or four yard gain there for uh, number eight. That's Parker Huff for the Indians. He's on. We're down to one more play to be run unless they throw an incomplete pass. And, uh, but I guess, you know, on the running clock, that would even, that would even stop it. I, I think Parker Huff might have a little bit of a cramp or something because he keeps slapping his leg and kind of tapping himself on the helmet. I think he's trying to say, hey, I need somebody to check in right quick. You know, we had some other uh, Darlington players get in the game. 84, Charlie Jackson has played, and uh, we're wanting, wanting to recognize all these young men because they're our future starting Tigers. Uh, Hendricks Jones, number seven. Uh, as I previously said, number eight, Jake Trebus at wide receiver. That's and that's going to do it for the game. Yep, that's your ball game. Darlington Tigers are going to win this one tonight on the road. 48-21 to 21 is your final score. Tigers win it. They move the season record to 7-0. 3-0 now in region play. Chattooga Falls to 1-6 and 0-3 and and in region play. Uh, but a great night for the Darlington Tigers. Great win. And, again, I do want to point out that's win number 175 and the great career of Tommy Atha, another milestone and a big night tonight at the Little Bighorn. 21 years his head coach has 
never had a losing season. Winning record all 21 seasons, 175th victory. Uh, you know, there's what's going on at Darlington and what's been going on for over 20 years now is very special. And anyone that's played here, attended here, been a, a part of the program in any way knows that. And uh, we're putting the product on the field. It is now 7-0. and uh, It's 7-0. and Great effort by everybody on the team tonight for the Darlington Tigers. Of course, the offensive and defensive line had a great game tonight. Uh, we talked about all the young men that would score here for the Tigers. You had Demarion Floyd scoring a couple of touchdowns in tonight's game. You'd have Braden Bell scoring on a touchdown pass. Uh, Lowenberg scored the first touchdown of the game. You had Bowden Owens getting into the end zone. Tommy Bethel on a touchdown catch. Uh, of course, Ryland Scott had another great game, had a couple interceptions. Jack Good, also Eli Thompson. It was just a great overall team effort tonight for the Darlington Tigers, Rick. And when you speak of the offensive line and you look at uh, – the, the work that uh, 51, Gatlin Hancock, 52, Bryant Powell, 66, Gus the Bus Gamage, and everyone else we can call on the line of scrimmage. I know Hayworth, uh, what number is Hayworth? Truett Hayworth, 56. 56. You just, these gentlemen just have an exemplary job protecting Jack Good, making holes open for Floyd, Thompson, and all the other running backs to really do their jobs as running backs and execute. So what are you thinking about a big sheet cake, Matt? Well, let's go for it. And if my wife, Tanya, is listening, she helps us facilitate that. And she <laughs> is the operations manager over at Honeymoon Bakery. Don't worry, honey. I'm throwing in on this cake. I'm That's right. I will, too. For you. WLAQ is pitching in because the big boys, they need to eat. The heavy eaters. The out of it. Hey, I'm sure after this game, the big eaters are going to be thin in the skin. They need to eat. That's, that is exactly <laughs> right. So tonight, again, Rick, it was a great night for the Darlington Tigers, Absolutely. a 48 to 21 win over the Tatuka Indians and a 7 and 0 start to the season 3 and 0 in the region. And I just want to take this opportunity, man. Um, you know, your numbers gotten called a few times over the last couple of years and you always do a fantastic job of helping out with these games and I always appreciate getting your insight and also getting to hang out with you and talk football for a few well, hours. Well, Matt, uh, I, I'm just so those gracious remarks, I'm just so honored by them and no one can substitute for Ian Griffin. I come in here and I meet with you and I fellowship with you. And how easy is it to call the Darlington Tigers game with such a successful program? It just happens with ease, doesn't it? It is so much fun, no doubt about it. Do want to take one more opportunity to uh, recognize the film crew tonight, Director Absolutely. Nathan Patterson, cameras. You got Thomas Patterson, also Benton Potts. They've done a great job, as always. Graphics tonight, Uta Patterson, and then their Gopher Clark. Clara Patterson can do it without her and all the things that she contributed tonight to the broadcast. And, of course, our guys at the studio, uh, Lynn Butler uh, running the show from Command Central at WLAQ and Lynn, um, his son Austin, and they're getting ready for the Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show, which is always a lot of fun to watch. I know we'll be listening to that on our trek back to Floyd County coming up in just a few minutes. But I think we'll go ahead and, and get ready to sign off for tonight. Uh, we appreciate you all listening and watching the live stream. It's, again, just just a great pleasure to get to call these games. We look at it as a privilege each and every week and hope you enjoy the broadcast. And I uh, just want to take the opportunity to, th to uh, congratulate the Darlington Tigers. Also, Tommy Ath on his 175th career win. 175, Coach Ather. Congratulations. And, Matt, it's been a pleasure to be with you always. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Been a lot of fun. Happy story tonight again for the Darlington Tigers picking up that 48-21 to win. They'll carry that back to Floyd County and Cave Spring. Road in Darlington School, and that's going to put a wrap on our end as we get you ready now for the Rome Orthopedic Center High School Football Scoreboard Show. If you're listening on the radio, for Rick uh, Lundy here, I'm Matt Davis saying so long, everybody. Hope you have a safe evening. Have a great weekend. Enjoy that fall weather. We'll talk to you next week as the Darlington Tigers get ready to host the Pepperell Dragons over at Chris Hunter Stadium. 7 o'clock pregame, 7.30, toe meets leather. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night. Darlington Football would like to thank the following sponsors for their support of this year's live stream. Business Water Solutions, Kusa Steel, Hardy Realty, Riverside Auto Group, and Atrium Health Floyd.
Thank you for your support. This broadcast is a production of Northwest Georgia Media. Thank you for watching.